Hello. I gotta do Hi. A, I gotta do a spook. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. hello. Them, them spooky efaps. I even got this, the spooky logos are on. Uh, we're spook we're checking out a little video game called uh. Scorn. Uh. Uh, oh my goodness. This is this is the a game that came out uh, uh, recently. The, the three of us have mm -hmm. played. Two of us have streamed. So if you really yeah, want to, came see. out on the fourteenth. Yeah, this is hot off the presses as a the re yeah. review analysis. Okay, and uh, we we were looking, we were interested in a little discussion, and it's kind of reminiscent of Amnesia Rebirth, only in the fact that it's a game that we're discussing at Halloween. Okay, there's no other connection than that. There's no need to say there's any other connection. Why yeah. would I suggest anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, before starting, I suppose it's worth saying that, unfortunately, I'm not even well equipped to say this, but hopefully we can fill it in between the three of us. It's a game that was pretty anticipated by a lot of people for a long time. Yeah, that's me. what I heard. It's one of them, it's been hyped. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's first teaser trailers and stuff have all been uh, sold on the fact that it's a combination of two very uh, specific artist to subsets of, of a very specific art style it creates very familiar vibe if you've seen alien or maybe even the thing uh, mm -hmm. kind of gives you a sense of all the fleshiness maybe a yeah. little bit yeah um but it's something that when people saw the the teasers for they were like holy shit this this is so unique uh can't wait to see what else they've got in hand and in fact a friend of mine said uh that when they first saw the teaser they were already sold by the visuals. They were now excited to see what kind of story would be within this world that could kind of contextualize oh. this. Um, on top of just, you know, they, presumably they would put in a standard form of gameplay of some kind. Wouldn't be a surprise if they would uh, do perhaps combat, perhaps puzzle solving, exploration. Uh, video games, all right? We got loads of options. It's a big yeah. old world. And so. It's been anticipated for years. I think at first they were going to release a Scorn Part 1 and Part 2. But then really? They, yeah, but then they decided they would delay the release of Part 1 to release it all as a big package. Um, That's interesting. I that say big considered. package. Uh, the yeah. average completion time <laughs> for this game package, is like yeah. three to four hours. Uh, so it's it goes from... You know how you have like films and short films? When games get small enough, you start like to want to call them arcade games, don't you? Like, or something very, very. What, what would be the term for it, a game that demands the sort of caveat that comes along with buying this game? If it's a single player game and every. Um, and, and there's no multiple endings, branching pathways, modes of playing, it's not like a roguelike in any sort of way. It's just a four hour game. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you'd I have can't... to call it, um, yeah, it just feels like a, a like yeah, indie game, but that almost feels like feels it's not unfair, fair, it? a lot yeah, of indie games. Unfair, yeah. Yeah. This is a forty dollar game that is about four hours long. That actually and shocked no me. Value. By the way, when I saw the price well, tag, because yeah. I played it on because I played it on Game Pass, and then someone was like, "What is going on, on Steam?" It's like this is forty forty bucks, like. Yeah, okay. thank goodness I had Game Pass, yeah. That's a pretty steep ask for what we that get is. in that package. So it finally comes out, and uh, I played it pretty much on release, same for Rags and Metal, and we have opinions. And what's neat is that you see, like, uh, we've all played it separate from each other, and we completed it separate from each other, and you can watch yes. live for at least two of us how our thoughts yeah. went from... You know, X to Y, or <laughs> yeah. we, we, what I, I guess I'm trying to say is that uh, you can argue that we have similar tastes, and that's why we we get along in life or something. But uh, I, I'm just saying that we didn't exactly copy and paste perspectives here. We've uh, we no. pulled, yeah, I... and then we had a well, chat. Funnily enough, we we were streaming at the same exact time, and we started basically at the same exact time, and that wasn't even planned. I was like, Are you, when do you start? Oh, now. It's like, oh, me too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just... pretty much. Had, and uh, some people in my chat went like back and forth and I was like, you basically like head to head like by 90 seconds or something. And then at some point I died a couple of times uh, and then you went ahead. But yeah, that was fun uh, yeah, to um... see. Just getting that, that feedback from your stream a little bit. I was like, oh, do we have the same thoughts? Because I was 
somebody starting to like, hmm, what's going on here? And then the same info came back from from someone in chat. It's just kind of interesting. There is that impending sort of anticipation as you play the game, waiting for something to happen, sort of. You you get dropped in, you have this short cinematic, don't ask me what it means, and then you're in the game and you start wandering around and you play for a while, and you're like, all right, this is neat. This is pretty neat. Um, and, and you're waiting for that moment mm -hmm. where you get a reveal, where you get some explanation, yeah, um... where you get some kind of a some kind of something happens, but it, it never happens. You're constantly sort of anticipating that something will happen. And, a, and it a, never comes. A mechanical equivalent, I think, is because uh, I recently started playing God of War 4 on stream. And the opening like hour of the game, you have access to your primary weapon, but only it's like basic moves, and you don't even get sprint. I think you get block. But uh, let's put it this way. You have like eight moves in total. This is not true, but let's mm -hmm. just say it is. They give you one for an hour, and then at the end of the hour, they're like, here's, here's another thing to change up the variables. And you're like, oh, okay. And then at the end of that next hour, it's like, here's another thing. This is also going to be changing your play, the way you play. And also, this enemy, you can't use that first move on him anymore. And you're like, oh, shit, when he does that, I have to do that. Okay. And, you know, by the time you hit the end of the game, you've got a huge varied system that applies for all kinds of encounters. And they'll be like, look, remember this enemy and this enemy and this enemy you encountered different times. All three of them are together now. And the environment has this. You know you can use that to do that. And you can switch to this. And uh, you've also built up your... Power mode, so you can use that again. It's just like this game games. Games work that way. They're, they're very chill. They introduce everything so nice and slow. So I thought when I started this game up, we were in the just appreciate the look of the game section. Like, yes. Um, I'm, I've got very few mechanics available to me because they want me to appreciate where I'm at and what style we've got. And I remember even being asked by chat. It's like, oh, this seems, this seems kind of kind of weird game, and I was like, oh, this'll be, this won't, this won't appeal to the mainstream. And that's okay. Uh, lots of styles of, of different pieces of media do that, um, and I'm fine with this. I, this already appeals to me because of the fact that I, it's so unique, and I'm interested in what it has to offer. Um, but yeah, what I, I guess I'm trying to say is the lack of mechanical depth uh, in even, like, the first hour or two of the game i figured was uh like a prologue i was like oh we're gonna be getting mm -hmm. far more stuff of course game because it's a game oh. yes yeah um that's, that's... what can i say so yeah like the the i suppose what we'll try to do here is uh talk about how the game starts up which as was mentioned there's a little cinematic of you breaking out of like some stuff and crawling but then you Sort of uh, have a vision of, well, it's it's unclear, right? Because we have no idea what yeah, really we're doing it, here. Either yeah. alternates between you and someone else, or you're having a vision as you're crawling. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think the person that you see in the main menu is the same person as you. Uh, this it's gonna be. I don't know how much we can really talk about it because this game doesn't have a story or characters. Yeah. And I know that's gonna make some people upset, but it it's just fucking true. Oh, we'll um, get it. <laughs> yeah, uh... So you know, I, I I think that's fair. That there's there's not you'll have to go to find some kind of interpretation video, basically of of what some of this stuff might mean. And this this isn't Dark Souls uh, storytelling where you get limited story and lots of lore, where Dark Souls implies a lot of events, has characters with names that talk about people they care about and what betrayals have happened via whatever families and what. Like this, Dark Souls is practically a, a full-on book compared to what happens in this, which is you are to interpret at your whim. Goes. Mm -hmm. It's more like a picture book without any text at all. Yeah. Sort of, um, but the pictures don't seem to. Um, I, I guess that's probably the difference between environmental storytelling and just being presented a story is that generally, what you see intuitively leads you to think other things um we don't know how i don't know how anything in this game relates to anything else in this game you seem to go between uh three different zones i suppose or maybe four depending on how you count them yeah and i don't know how they're linked in any way i don't know what's going on i don't know what did happen I, you just don't know anything and you can only speculate you could only you could only just sort of 
guess. I wish there were a word to really imply the level of speculation. Like, you can only speculate speculating. Yeah, because so... you look around and everything is, like, kind of barren. And to some point, maybe even post-apocalyptic because everything is, like, broken and there's nothing really going on. Like, nothing... Nothing human lives here anymore, just only these fleshy well, whatevers. Yeah, that's the thing. I've heard and seen um, theories and breakdowns of like, oh, this is clearly post, like, like future humans that have tried to reach a transcendence and things have gone wrong and evolved on their own and stuff. And I'm just like, uh, I, oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah could be. If you say so. I don't, I mean, maybe. I, I have no clue. You could make all sorts of things up. Uh, but like, I don't see why I can't just say, well, no, it's hell. Clearly it's hell. And oh, clearly. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about the suffering of the flesh. Something, whatever. Um, the first of these areas that you walk right into is this. Is it's, it's quite again. I, I'm gonna have to. I'll keep in, in uh, talking about this because I think it's true. Like, it, it's very striking yeah. visually. I was like, whoa. Oh, absolutely. And, very. And it's probably the biggest strength of the game is how it looks. The in a feeling I got from from it is was very similar to when I first ever watched Alien and Alien subsequently when you see that space jockey and the 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 ship sense of absolute wonder shock and almost fear of, of what in the world could all of this mean and mm -hmm. how alien and and otherworldly it all is and that's that's great and cool uh it's, it's you know and and it's doing fine at this point uh but you know I was like oh there's a big old thing in the middle of the room, so I'll, I guess I'll go there first, that's probably the important thing, but I, I got, I don't know. And then it's like, you can put your hand in a, or you, you look into a terminal and you can control what looks like a little track. Okay? Alright, yeah, so be... we're, we're controlling a track and, ex and its exits, okay. Um, and you also have as well, like, you walked up to some terminal and you've got like a little spiky thing on your hand now, and it's like, well, it lets you access terminals. Mm -hmm. Cool, alright, yeah, cool. Um, I guess once you've looked around everywhere, you'll find that there are two devices that will do something to whatever you put on the track. And then uh, uh -huh. you can find an elevator that takes you up and you get your first puzzle, should I say? I think it's fair. Yeah, yeah. I'd call it a puzzle. Yeah. It's a puzzle, yeah. Um, this one, uh, I figure out where it is in the time. This one? Oh, yeah, there here we go. go. This is... Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure there's a name for this kind of puzzle. There probably is. Uh, like a slide puzzle? Yeah, where you move the... Yeah, like a slide puzzle. Uh, that's probably what I'll go with. Yeah, sure. Um, there are only uh, a certain amount of spaces available to move certain blocks, but you need to get uh, the light blocks up to the, the, the top left. Obviously, I was yeah, still figuring there's... this out. I didn't know exactly what it wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, Which is weird, because to me, uh, I, I, once I saw this, I was like, oh, I know exactly what I need to do. Yeah. Um, it was just a matter of uh, just doing it. And I, was, I enjoyed this puzzle for what it was. A nice, simple little slide them around, rearranging uh, thing uh, to grab one of these little eggs. I was curious if pods. when you asked the machine to move the ones that aren't lit, that it would remove them and obviously make it much easier. It just eats it as a sort of, nope. Um, yeah, you gotta slide them around. Huh? Yeah, I was engaged by this. I was like, alrighty, figure this out long term. Got ourselves a bit of puzzles going on. Alrighty, it's not just well. I suppose we'll get into that later because it's it, it's right after this. But yeah, this part was a nice little puzzle. What else can you say? Yeah, um, all right. And I'm surprised they didn't use it uh, more than once. I guess. Uh, I expected this to come back like at least two more times i don't know just felt like it's going to be a standard puzzle we got to do and uh -huh. it just gets harder but no that's that's the only place that's all we get from this one that's a number of the puzzles they're all one they're they're one, all one offers pretty much uh yeah yeah um i don't really know what else to say about this one it's uh pretty clear I, I guess visually from what you have to do you have to move these around until you get the the one that's lit up to the location you need it at. So. Yeah, yeah, way up in the top left, so that little hook can uh, can and drag it away. And what while all this is happening, you don't have any context for really what you're doing, who you are, where you are, what's going on, what the ultimate goal is, other than just the video game 
element of I know I oh. need to progress. You know what we can do? Oh, this is great. Yeah. All three of us oh. have played Soma. We don't have to worry about spoilers. Uh, oh, it's true. So I can do comparisons because I I have so many thoughts in my head about how this compares to Soma, but Soma has a similar sort of approach of, for about an hour of the game, on average probably, you don't know who you are or why you're there. Mm -hmm. but then you're given quite an extensive understanding of who you are as to why you're there is is still a little bit vague, but by the time you hit like the halfway point it becomes pretty clear, especially when you find your recordings. Um you when you died after the brain scan gave you the uh, mm -hmm. well, the the solutions and stuff. Um, this game, uh, I don't think they ever tell you. <laughs> like, what's, no, uh, no. Like, what's you're, going on? You're basically some nobody who's walking around with some kind of sentience, I guess, because well, you do all these puzzles, right? So, but that's yeah. all you, you. You're looking for something, apparently. Yeah, you seem to be. I don't know if your character is supposed to be here or not supposed to be here uh you seem to operate the technology as if you know what it does mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the the stuff in this game wouldn't intuitively be like oh this is a thing that does this but uh completely without any sort of context or reason or explanation so you're just sort of progressing because it's a game and i need to progress um i recognize that there are buttons to hit i recognize that there are uh, you know, things to do that will lead me forward. So that's really all that's keeping you going right now. Yeah, despite the um, aesthetic, it's there's still a, as I said, there's still gamey game things happening. It's like, oh, yeah. I gotta get this thing to get this thing to get this thing. Like, normal stuff. Uh, so, yeah, uh, information-wise, we are very low on it. But you get this, and there's a little guy in there. And uh, this is, again adding to the the creep factor of the game the uncertainty of even anything that's to do with what's going on and you can't imagine anything good is going to happen to this little guy who's no this thing i thought he was going to be used as some kind of battery like uh and that's how it works in this world that like the batteries are people or something and a lot of stuff just hook him up I somewhere and was... anything yeah, yeah. When I was playing this, I was thinking that we have to use the tracks to transport this guy in the pod to the next area, and that would be our way of getting into the next area, was he had to go through the process, I guess, of getting him out of the pod and yeah. d doing something with him, and to, uh, not exactly, it's sort of what happens, but not really, so, um, yeah, because yeah, you're looking at all these little carts and stuff, and you're like, oh, so you put the little pods on the carts and push them and, and and that's how you get out do i need him as like like the, is the progress door only gonna open if i have one of these pods with me so i have to figure out how to take the pod with me and like huh i wonder what it is but i guess you don't have to think too hard because um you kind of just press the buttons as you come to them almost and it sort of sorts itself out yeah um yeah there's I... not once you spot where he's landed, you can just sort of move him. Um, though this sort of is the beginning of noticing something about this game, which is that uh, a lot of the time stuff just sort of works a particular way and that there's no necessary... Like, you press action once you've activated this to pick him up, and then you need to hit down to move the arm down. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that at first. I was just like, what's my option now? Do I need to push the cart to him? Do I need to click him and drag him down? I was, I was like... Not 100% clear on this, but it's like, yeah, you need to, once it's in the oh, arm, I gotcha. hit direction down to bring the arm down. Like, yeah. okay. It's not too much of a complaint. More so just, um, I didn't, I don't, uh, it just, just, it could have been anything. It wasn't necessarily at all uh, clear to me. I was just like, well, luckily with enough of experimentation, you can get through it. But it's, uh, it chips away at time, which the thing that I notice. There's a lot of things in this game that yeah. add to the time. Say, for example, I had uh, accessed the terminal and pressed one button, and then it did the whole sequence. They could have made it that way, but they didn't. Oh, you need to press down, or left, or right, and then hit the action button. Yeah. And then yeah, you and need the to go through the other turns, things. I guess white, once it has a, a valid thing that you can do with it. And upon learning uh, that, every terminal I access now in future, I, I make sure to press up, down, left, right, 
just mm -hmm. in case. I don't know if it's going to do something else. And I think the directions on the little UI that show up in the bottom right will show you the options that you have for direction. Well, in um, that case, yeah, that's, that's much more clear. Um, yeah. Yeah, I see oh. right here, left and right. It show, There's no up and down option. It's just left and right. Ah, uh, okay. But again, uh, something like this, it's necessary. But the one we just did, it's like, why wasn't that just one button instead of technically like three? Something yeah, there. Necessary. you don't lose anything by just sort of pressing the activate button and having the machine just do it for you if there's only one thing that you could do anyway. Um, yeah. It, it can only cause some level of confusion and time spending. There is no other potential alternative as to how it could go. And it's not something to be solved. It's just that you have to make sure to hit the, you know, the controls for the little arm that drops him down into the pod. Now we'll come to probably what is the most big criticism of me. Mm -hmm. So... Are you both familiar, because I wasn't, with the fact that this game, apparently, uh, there was a level of promise from the developers that this game was going to involve several moral choices? I only learned about this after the fact, and then it sort of... I, I When I learned about this, kind of while scrolling through the reviews after I'd finished the game, I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. I could see where this would have been in a different version of this game, <laughs> but it never came to fruition. It just didn't make it into the final product. I was a little bit baffled um, by it, because I was just like, what? There's, I don't even recognize choices in this game. Um, yeah. And then I was like, the only thing I think I had a choice on was that first decision with this little guy. But um, this, this is it. When we, when is, we call choices, it. it's like, I, I don't know if I'd call it a choice. I had no idea what was going to happen on either one. More of a coin flip. Um, well, I didn't even see it as a coin flip. It was just like, oh, I need to go to this one first, then to the next one, because I have two things. Because uh, that's thought, how I yeah, felt yeah. like, so I the, like about, the game was going to go. We're talking about scoop and saw, right? Yes. Exactly, yeah. So um, I thought that the saw was for something else entirely. I okay. had no idea that the saw was actually a part of the pod procedure. I thought that the mm -hmm. saw would be used in some other puzzle that we would be... Because this looks like a sort of big hub area that you're going to be spending a, a decent amount of time in. Yeah. I never saw a a connection to where that you would use use the pod on the saw. I was like, well, that's dumb. Why would, why would I bring this guy down in the pod and, and put him on the cart and then push him, yeah. him to the saw just to mm -hmm. just to saw him like that that doesn't make any sense what's what obviously the saw is for something different yeah that's what i thought yeah. after I, I i scooped him i was like oh i guess i go Good. back to this later on with something else but hey uh that's not the case i had a different interpretation i was like i can uh possibly scoop and saw him but sawing him is just cruel and gonna kill him so uh, I'm not sure about that. And then everyone in chat was lighting up. They were like, la, 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 you're heading toward the scoop, you fool. And I was just like, huh? But before we carry on that storyline, we'll go with the, yeah, there are moral decisions to make that will affect the outcome in this, this I was about to say outcomes in this game, but I can't be that generous. It's, uh, hmm. there's, there's just the things that'll happen. It's like, so apparently this is one of them. There is a moral choice to make with this guy, which is like, what? Uh, like 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 how what what is it and chat was saying to me you can't take him to the scoop because it would kill him and i was like why it looks like it looks like it scoops him out or it, it looks it like it gets him out, him out of the, out of the thing pot, yeah, or... and, yeah then, I... and, and then they were like you know compare that to the grindy thing that's just gonna that's just gonna mulch him i don't see how that could possibly like obviously intuitively the scoop will save him and the the soul will kill him, if anything. That's what I assumed. The thing so, is, even uh, though I, even though I didn't piece together that you would want to saw the pod, because why the fuck would you saw the pod? That doesn't make any yeah. sense. Why would I want to do that? Um, whereas I assumed I needed maybe like an empty pod, or I needed to deposit him somewhere so that I can proceed. Um, I just assumed this is what you were supposed to do. Uh, like there wasn't even another option to make yet. Uh, the tracks were um, almost like you had to divert the tracks in sequence so that you can go to the first side room, then go back, 
change the tracks, push it to the next thing, then go to the next side room or something along those lines. I never I, would have thought that this is it. Yeah, no, yeah. and I had a bit of a thing with my chat where I had to explain to him like there are there are times where say a glitch happens and they can inform me that I need to do something to fix it or that they can tell me there's a mechanic I missed and I need to do that one to, to get out of the situation I'm in. I was like, that's all well and good. But telling me that um, I should go and saw him because that will save his life is so out of whack to the intuitive nature of what I'm dealing with right now. Ooh, to what a saw all, is. Yeah, I, I first of all wasn't even clear that I was going to be killing... Like, if you if you had told me, if the developer had said, oh no, there are just two ways to kill him. The scoop will kill him and the saw will kill him. I'd have been like, oh right, okay. And killing him is something we need to do, right? Harvest is whatever to do something. And I was like, yeah, fine, mm -hmm. whatever. I guess that's what we're doing. However, telling me that I have now made the choice to condemn this little creature to die versus saving him, and that is a moral decision I have made, and that's what all of chat was saying. I was like, that is so far away from anything that I can... Re See, look, I even tested it out, and I was like, this would kill him. There is no way... Look at this. That's going to kill him. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> that'll kill him. There's no that question. Will kill him. And, I, and I was like, I'm sorry, if I'm going to take this game seriously, I can't, like, just take you guys as telling me that and go with it, because I wouldn't have done that if I was playing on my own. I would have gone with what I think is the better choice, which is right now I'll scoop him, get him out of this thing, because it looks like he's alive, it looks like he's suffering, and it looks like he wants to get out of this situation, and it looks like I can do that for him. That's my best interpretation. However, there's another angle to that that we'll get to in a second. So, I opt for the scoop. The scoop kills him. Um, pretty gross. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I checked a video online, and you guys can do the same, where if you use the saw... Oh no, sorry, I didn't even check a video. I actually just uh, booted up the game and did it myself, because I was curious. There's an achievement for it as well. Um, the saw does indeed destroy the pod he's in. It doesn't destroy him, and he escapes. How? The, <clears throat> the way the saw goes in there when you test it out, it's just right in where he would face. Like uh, The machine puts yeah. him, him in backwards. And then oh, the, the how saw, the fuck am I supposed to know that? Not only that, the saw doesn't go all the way. It only goes as far as breaking the uh, thing. So this is just several layers of unintuitive. I would go as far as saying nonsense. Have, yeah, I'm just now learning about it. You know, I have. As I wouldn't have bizarre. guessed that in a million years. I would just no. would have assumed <clears throat> that the saw kills him. Um, I don't you know, like um, metal head based on where it goes, and I, I wouldn't have even guessed. I don't really get how this sort of thing happens. It's it's uh, this, it's one thing to not tell us, like, oh, this is the kill room and this is the save room, right? You know, that, that could be a little bit too overt and silly. But it's quite another to be like, would you like to use the health kit on this man or the hammer? You know, like, oh, well, the health kit. And then you stuff the health kit down his throat and kill him, or use the hammer to break his chains. It's like, right, okay. Uh, so yeah, see there he goes. He's just dead now, and he's gone. Also, I don't know how he died, but I, okay. And I didn't, um, I didn't approve of throwing him down a little hole. Yeah, yeah just, I, just I, that. <clears throat> I thought that something would kick the pod in the hole or something. Yep, and I, thought I, that, I noticed yeah. there's all these bodies here, but I don't know what that means. You know, like and and plus they're not all fucked up. If you're supposed to be scooped out, then why would there be bodies here? I I had no clue that like that was supposed to. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, also, how lucky that that arm just stayed behind. Exactly, yeah. That's that's the thing we like need. What's, apparently. A, By the way, I didn't even... I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I need that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the game highlighted it for me, so I said, okay, I well, guess... Well, I, I knew need I needed it because I looked at all the places before I went here. So it's like, oh, I need to... I need an extra something here. It's like, oh, I guess I need to put this hand in this device. Yeah. No. It's some door. That is the only moral decision in the whole game. Yeah, because they clearly, it. I'm going to say this several times, this is the first time, hadn't finished the game. Uh, they wanted to have more, I imagine, and this was the only one they managed to get complete, and it's clearly not complete. The, mm -hmm. they, if they had tested this out, they would have found players, 99% of players would have been like, oh, that was a moral choice? And then they'd be like, oh, well, yeah, didn't you get that? And then I'd wonder, like, intuitively, most people are not going to want to kill him. You understand that, right? And then they'd be like, yeah, what is that? What are you trying to say? And I'd be like, do you think there are many players who are like, I want to be evil. I'm going to kill him. 
and then you'll suffer, make them suffer for it. Just to give you an equivalent, right, Bioshock is like, if you kill the little sisters, you'll get more resources, but that's really mean. Um, that's a choice to make. You're, you're, you're hitting the fact that they have to kill a little girl against getting more Adam. Even though you end up with more Adam, I think, if you go good in that game. The, eventually, it catches up. Um, so, you need something of an incentive, right, for both sides? Which is kind of its own little discussion on, like, if, if you have a video game with moral choices, I mean, should just the evil options just objectively be the best in terms of what they give you and how easy it is? Or it should, by it design, equal? should or, or even, like, should you just come out with, should it be literally harder to do by taking the morally good option? Well, that's that like a, that, a whole subject on its own, own, right? Like it's exactly yeah, it's its own. It's, that's it's its a own super thing. interesting one. I love uh, talking about like how choices are contextualized <laughs> in video games, but this one's kind of baffling because I don't, I don't think they've realized. Um, do they think that killing this guy is the definitive moral evil in this world? Because I'm I have not no sure. For anything. It's a good question. It seems like they have like this whole system set up to make that. Like a, it feels to me like they've decided thing. killing him is a moral bad, and it's like, uh. I guess well, to me, yeah, like yeah, to, to me, killing this random guy does seem to be a bad thing. Yeah, contextualized in this world, I have no clue what any of this. Exactly. Means That's, so this is does, this ended. is the big problem as far as I'm concerned. It, to me, intuitively, I wouldn't want to kill him. However. If yeah. he was able to speak, he might be saying, kill me, kill me, please kill me, I, like, I beg you, please kill me. And then you'd be like, oh shit, why? And then he's like, I'm just in constant agony. But I don't know, I have no idea what's happening here. Compare that over with something like Soma, where it has several moral choices throughout the game. They, uh, they try to give you all the context you need to understand there's a huge, complicated thing happening. And it's really going to be down to your own personal values as to whether or not you'll press the button or not, so to speak. Um, as an example, right, you run a guy's brain through a program several times because you need to get information out of him and you keep manipulating him until you can finally get it. And then at the end, when you have what you want, you can either like reset the program and put him to sleep sort of thing, or you can delete him. And of course, uh, like I think your character is like, it's fucked up The the next person who comes along will just wake him back up and manipulate him just like we did to get whatever they want out of him, or that he's always here to be used, especially in the world of Soma, which is that uh, brain scans get uploaded to his flesh creatures of any kind. If you delete him, he can't suffer. If you don't, anything could happen to him, but he can still experience things at that point. So, which is better, right, to, to have him have a chance at some form of existence or to lock off any chance of him being in forms of agony or manipulation and stuff. That's what they make you think about for a while. In this game, yeah. though, they seem to have just said, well, no, it's evil to kill him. And you're like, oh, mm. okay. All and then right, you don't I, even know I, which I, one kills him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It, like, I, it, it's pretty intuitive to pretty much everyone playing this game that you, by default, don't want to kill people you come across. Pretty safe assumption. Yeah, that's just a really normal thing, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's the saw scoop thing that is not at all intuitive, and no. it is the opposite of what I thought it would be. It looks like a um, lot of us thought that uh, that it would be the scoop would save him. I don't, I, I just don't understand why they would put it that way. Yeah. Um, so not a great start. I, I was a little put off by that. I was like, well, that was that was strange. Um, and I, I guess we're done with that whole area now. That w that was it. So I was kind of hoping in my head, like, was that the prologue? We, I guess we're done with sort of, I understand that I can access consoles, I understand there'll be choices. So now what are we going to do? Like, well, new area, and lots to appreciate. To check this shit By out. By the way, it was a, it, here is the point where I was not certain if I was going to go back to that other area, because I was still like, oh, there, there's still a, like, are, am I done with this area? Is that saw, was that an option for him? Right. Was I, so I wasn't even certain that, I had finished that area. Yeah, same with me. I was like, I mean, we didn't use the saw thingy, so I guess we will be back. Well, I guess because for me, chat told me that um, you've opted for the, the scoop instead of the saw, and that's done now, that's your choice. And I was like, yeah, I own it. That was the choice I made, because I think that was the reasonable choice. Yeah. I will suffer the consequences. 
Yeah, and look at that. Get, Our playthroughs are different at that point. Yeah, definitely. You enter this room, which is um, you gotta a get a little get a little robot to take little nodes from the floor up into like a pillar and then activate them, and you open doors. Uh, some people have referred to this as a puzzle. It is. So, I mean, eventually we're going to have to have the discussion yeah. on what is a puzzle and what is just basic problem solving. Um, this was a room that took me a while to finish, not because there was any sort of difficulty, but there was confusion because I had missed the little thing that you stand on. Okay. Uh, I just didn't know that that was a thing that you did. But mm. as for this part, I mean, it's only there's only like one thing you could do anyway. There's no puzzle to it. You go up to the little the the little pods in the pillar and you do the thing with the floaty basket and that that's that as you, you know, can see not um a, not a puzzle and i'm hoping this is illustrated as we go through just visually in the background uh this is how i play video games a lot of the time i really like to look around to make sure i catch everything be it uh, anything that's happening in the environment that should be seen or anything mechanically. I often even, if there are like three switches in a total in a level, I'd like to find them first, see if they connect to anything, and then decide what I'm going to do first. Um, I think I may have been trained on this by playing several games, like uh, what I'd reference is Bioshock, Dead Space, God of War. These are games where there's a shit ton to collect, a shit ton of yeah. bonuses in, in rooms that aren't anything to do with the plot line, and uh, they'll benefit you mechanically, but sometimes storytelling-wise as well. So in a game like this, I was like, I'm gonna make sure I check everything because I want to, I want to grab up everything in this game, and I'm starting to get jaded uh, with that approach oh. with different games because yeah, you don't um, get rewarded for it, you don't feel. Yep. It's it's not even just not getting rewarded. It's just like sometimes you'll get punished, uh, which we'll have to oh. get into at some point with this, which is unacceptable yeah, as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, that's a that's a big no no. And so like yeah, I at well, this we point. That with Resident Evil, um, village and again we will also get into that we've uh reached <laughs> funnily enough like 20 percent of the game is done at this point which is like tam dude um yeah goes quick uh meanwhile oh. i've streamed i think at this point 16 hours of god of war 4 and i am uh i've just found mimir metal <laughs> um that's uh, chunky game it is a huge game. Fucking game if you want especially to if you do oh, all the side stuff it's uh Really engaging. Out of uh, curiosity, can and on the upload as people are watching this, can they see the timestamp of the video? They the can't. But um, I am okay. fifty minutes into a four-hour and fifty-minute stream. But to be fair, I think mine is unusual because of how much time mm -hmm. I spend making sure I don't miss anything. Yeah, uh, um, I tend to take my time as well when it comes to games, particularly ones like this. I like to explore, do the side quests. I like to mm -hmm. check the nooks and crannies. I like to explore, and especially a game that presents itself as being really atmospheric and has this cool art style to it. Yeah. You, you want to check it all out. You want to see it, and that'll just slow you down. Um, subsequent playthroughs when you don't need to see that stuff or you realize there is nothing to see. Mm -hmm. You'll just play. I don't know why you'd fucking play this a second time, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I will never play this game again. It's, uh, no. I will never play Amnesia Rebirth again. Well, here's, yeah. a, here's a fun little thing, which I haven't mentioned yet. At this point, I'm still convinced this is going to be a shooter at some point, like a full blown running around and shooting a lot of things. Yeah, I knew yeah, there would be that. shooting in it, but I had no expectations of anything for how this game was going to go i had managed to stay pretty out of the loop on it so i was just going to take it for what it was yeah, well i, I, I always was under the impression it's promos, it's uh... good oh I, i'd only seen some very brief promo like a, a trailer or two that had shown some gun stuff in it that was very simple mm -hmm. and it, that was really all i knew i had no clue how deep it would be how good it would be i was like okay we're not at that section yet or you're, mm. you know, we're not, we're not that yeah. part. We're still in pure puzzle, solvey, exploration, learn what's going on kind of mode. We're not at that point yet. But yeah, I just do... want to consider because I talked about that game a couple of times. It's like, I'm going to play this, like, it's a thing, like this horror shooter thingy. It's going to be great. And no one complained that I said it's a shooter, like a full-blown one. So I think I'm not alone with thinking it's going to be um... like a big... Big I gory do, I'm having a bit of a memory thing. Okay, I think, yeah, when the there was a trailer that came out, I remember discussion on it was like, 
I hope they haven't shown us the best stuff because not a lot is going on. Um, I remember that was one of the the latest trailers that came out for this, and it did relate to the shooting mechanics because um, they showed a whole bunch of it, and that is something that's being discussed right now. Was was the fact that they walked or showed a lot of shooting shit? Uh, it changed public perception of what to expect from the game. Didn't affect mine. You can even t uh, hear me defending the game when people are saying this is boring when's the shooting happen. I was like, hey, hey whoa, 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 we're doing yeah. fine. We're having a look around. This is sort of early game. Okay? Yeah. I mean, if a real life was actually going on, I was like, okay, this is more like a survival Pro pen life. and dealio uh, when you... Yeah. Uh, obviously, when you start getting weaponry. Amnesia is some, famous for starting up or popularizing, I guess, the genre of you don't have the weapons. You just solve puzzles, solve problems, and avoid enemies. Yeah. So I was more than ready for that, but yeah, this is where you get your first weapon, bows. Weapon uh, tool, yeah, it's yeah, a bit weapon of both. Tool. A little this pokey is pokey. your, it's it's a tool, and it is also your because in survival horror games or really any survival game, it is generally advised that you do not present scenarios to the player that causes them to be soft locked. So if you have a player uh, in a game where ammo is very scarce and like you run out of ammo, but you need one bullet in order to shoot something in the distance to unlock a door, then almost every time that will be presented in games, there will be at least a bullet lying around for you mm -hmm. to pick up so that it's there for you. Um, so that way you don't have a scenario where people are just, they, they're just sort of doomed. Yeah. Uh, how you balance that out? Again, it's its own full discussion. Do you give players who need it more? Do you um, always have, or, or or you have something like this? You have that melee weapon that has unlimited ammo, and you could. I mean, if you absolutely need to, you can stretch its use to prevent that sort of soft locked um, scenario. Yeah, uh, uh, and if you look at the way it shoots, a little bit reminiscent of the alien in a mouth. Um, yeah. I assume it's a reference yeah. in that sense. You unlock a whole bunch of these weird things, and uh, well, uh, well, you're able to use the these little battery things as well, and and then complete, like I said, the puzzle, well, which is just moving walk... thing to thing. You have you have to hit the floating things with your melee weapon. Oh yeah, yeah. I um, it's... you have to break them as you walk past them. I think right. Yeah, because yeah. they spray flumes everywhere, and if you walk through it, you get hurt. Yeah, like steam or something. Um, yeah. You just sort of walk through the little... Uh, yeah, you walk through here. And... I was getting really confused. I was like, oh, am I supposed to kill him? <laughs> yeah, they don't look like... You know, like they're aggressive or like they're enemies. I, I mean, I hit. A, I killed them. I assumed that this, this happened right after we got our weapon. So I kind of, you know, like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. we're supposed to hit these with our weapon... Um, because I guess they're just randomly floating here, spraying this thing that's a video game barrier, when it doesn't seem like it's doing anything whatsoever. So, okay, this is a very video gamey thing. Alright, I'll hit them and move on. And I did, and that was that. Yeah, you, uh, you get access to more of these nodes, and in they go, and then that unlocks the doors, and... A I boop guess tree, you to... or something. Oh, right. It's coming everywhere. <laughs> you yeah, open so up the, you open up all the windows. This you third do. one doesn't yeah. work though, right? It jams. Um, I does can't it? Quite remember. I know. I flumes start to come out of the pillar, like it doesn't work correctly. Oh, I um, think something. Yeah, something's not right. I guess. Just changes <laughs> the volume. Because you go to the left one, you press the button like with the rest, you turn it. And then a bunch of tism comes out of the pillar, and then it. I think it bonks everywhere. you on the head, right? Something like that. Because it's uh, this then sends you. Is this the part where it sends you into the other self? Uh, I think so. So. Yeah, they, it just doesn't work. Um, it, it it's kind of like the getting the arm from the the pod guy it's like i guess incidentally we found a way to progress to the next zone 
I don't feel like this is how you're supposed to do it, but, you know, like, in, at least in the context of this universe, you know, I, I guess we're just sort of, you know, we made it, I suppose. You know, we got an arm that I guess we needed. Uh, but, yeah, all the flume starts spilling out. And then you go to the next person zone, or you, you get put Maybe. into a you get put into a pod or you get you wake up in one so i guess you're you might be a different person but yeah i'm still unclear on that uh because we wake up here and i i distinctly remember that this character you're playing when you get to the next door that needs the needle thingy your character looks at his hands like oh wait is it gone like okay i guess i need a new one but it also could mean, oh, I don't have the thing that I need. So I, I don't know if this is us again that in another shell. That a different person, yeah. I guess it is a different person. So or a different body. That last, yeah. So that last guy was... Um, can you? I wonder if... Can you You go back to the little cylinder? Are you, would you see him in the... Um, um, I don't know, actually. I didn't, I didn't get checked. I didn't think to really check either. Um... But I guess you're a new person, so Woo that other person, what did he do? What did he accomplish? Don't know. Uh, it might I even be someone you end up getting back at some point, some way. I, I just gunked don't know. Gunked on. That's what, what you accomplished. You got gunked on and killed someone. Yeah, welcome to Spooky Desert. Full Gai Giga Desert. Uh, what a fucking oh, waste of time nice... this area is. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, it takes yeah, a while. There's... And like again, this is, I think this is where I started to realize I don't think there's any point in looking around. There's nothing to get or see, really. Like, there's a lot of. And I kept nothing. looking around for a while. I kept it going. I was like, no, no, I'm going to keep doing it. Yeah, I, I looked here still, but like, when I was through this, I was like, is there even a point in me exploring? Like, am I going to find anything? Well, so I started saying to people, like, I'm not sure, I guess, what I would collect at this point, considering this kind of game. I wonder if they thought yeah. collecting things would have been too, uh, too gamey game for what is more of what people might call an experience. But I was thinking to myself, like, mm, this is, especially once you get the combat going, there's loads of gamey game stuff in this. It's not like it's yeah. to be taken as a more of a, um, you, you just, just a visual experience or something. I was like, this definitely, especially, by the way, it is a video game. Um, it is in a format that it would be like we're talking about some the the film like portions of it just go black, just like okay that's uh, an idea I suppose just like you kind of un unmuted like so it's just off. Um, maybe that sounds a little harsh because you can still walk right, but that's what's always been the discussion about video games it's like when it's just walking. How long before we're not even video games anymore? Um, no. And what I don't I was... want to get cynical about, yeah, the the idea that this is some sort of a an, an art thing that transcends you know, I, I any guess requirements. At what point? I mean, maybe it's just easier to sell. I mean, I don't know. Did they really want to make a game, or did they want to just make an an atmosphere and fill it with stuff? Um, it almost feels like the game elements of this are. I don't know. They're not. Act on uh, almost. Sort of, because as far as a game goes, it's not an entertaining game. The the you know, especially as we get into the combat later, it's very simplistic and kind of frustrating. Oh, definitely. Annoying. Yeah. Um, frustrating. A lot of the design elements for intuitive puzzle work is 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 not really there. There's only a couple real what I would even call high points in the game, uh, but those are sort of isolated puzzles that don't really have anything to do with the environment itself. Um, I have a, uh, a patience meter as a human being, and yeah. for every dead end I find when exploring, that patience meter goes down. Oh, um, yeah. And it's funny, because that patience meter could honestly be satisfied, and this this sounds counterintuitive, but you see our health bar is like, I think, it's something like eight nodes, something like that, uh, eight, eight blocks. Um, if you removed six of those, I only have two right now. That's how harsh the game is, oh my god. But they're a little, like pieces of flesh around that are special if you grab them or if you go near them. And you can have the first one be that I see it, I look at it, it's curious, I pick it up in my hand and then it goes <laughs> and it goes into my hand and I'm like, ah, Jesus! And then my health bar goes up. And it's like, yeah. oh. 
Because yeah. why um, not, right? This world is fucking insane. I don't think they need to have a justification for why that might work that way. Um, and you could even make them, you know, different organs or something gross. Whatever you want, people who make this game. Um, mm -hmm. And then put them in uh, distant and hard to reach places. And be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, uh, there you yeah, go. So I look around and I go, oh, shit, health upgrade, nice. Yeah. It's interesting you bring it up because we talked about that uh, during my stream with chat. It's like, hey, it's kind of weird. <clears throat> like someone chat mentioned it. It's like, it's kind of weird that they don't have like a, I don't know, health suck mechanic with all this flashiness all around. It seems like a no brainer almost to put that in this game. We have like this little, I mean, you have these weird devices on your hand anyway for opening up shit. But another one where you suck the blood out of those weird monsters or something and then you get health back that way. Yeah, and uh, Soma's equivalent is that it's basically every single place you go, there's going to be something storytelling-wise happening. You'll find diaries, you'll find descriptions, you'll find reports, you'll find the black boxes to play, you'll find uh, offices, places that have been lived in and the damage in them will relate to something that's happened in the place. The game is heavy on storytelling, it constantly wants to tell you a story. This game, as you guys may have seen up to this point, if you've been watching the visuals as well, very little to take in other than what's in the visuals. Now, a lot of people would probably argue that is a lot of environmental storytelling, and I would be like, I think there's a difference between... It's almost like environmental storytelling versus environmental law. Um, uh, kind of, yeah. Uh, like, a, I understand this is a place. Uh, let's say you're playing... Let's say you're playing Fallout, right? You're wandering around the post-apocalyptic wasteland outside, and there's lots of old cars and rusted buildings and skeletons and stuff like that so you're wandering around just exploring as you do and you come up to a hill in the wilderness uh you, you maybe you're following a road and the road turns into a dirt road and then that dirt road kind of veers off into the woods and then you come across maybe a big skeleton and a smaller skeleton and they're at this bench and on the bench, there's some soda bottles, and the uh, and there's a BB gun there on the table, and a bunch of BBs. And nearby, on some tree stumps, there are an assortment of bottles, some broken, some not. And so you're like, okay, so I guess these two, this, I guess this was a father and son, most likely. They're out here just shooting BB guns at cans. All right, and they brought some drinks with them to drink. And, and that that's like a that's like environmental storytelling, right? It's a little tiny, isolated mini thing that you could piece together based on the the context of what's around it. You're like, oh, okay, little little tiny thing, but that's 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 environmental storytelling. You haven't been told anything, but it's a story that you can piece together based on what you found. Yeah, in this uh... game, I don't think there's any of that, or maybe there is. It's not. Like, I can't piece it together. I think it's... If, if, for people to be reasonable, there's very little you can piece from a rational, normal point of view of, like, how linear uh, events would be. This is pushing it significantly. I've already seen people try to piece some stuff together, and it, it's always fronted with, like, I have no idea if this is <laughs> me being crazy or if this is what it is. Meanwhile, as you just described, they do that a lot in The Last of Us. It'll be like, you picked up a note, and this note says, like, you know, Dear Marjorie, if you find this, uh, you haven't returned from your you know, thing to the local market. I assume something may have gone wrong. Please, if you find this note, you know, come back to me. Let me know if it, you know, I'll do anything I can to get back to you. Then another, another note is like, uh, we're running out of resources now. There's only a couple days worth left. Uh, you know, our two kids are having a lot of trouble and blah 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 and then eventually you know you find all these notes leading to it and then eventually you find a house you unlock a door you can find some resources but if you look to the right there's like a you know maybe two graves that are small and then an, uh, an inscription that says uh we just couldn't make it Marjorie, i love you or something and then uh maybe a skeleton next to them and a gun from a guy who maybe killed himself and it's the same thing we're just like oh shit, that's a complete story and yeah. uh, a lot of it wasn't told to you you have to work as the player to get to it. And that's what I was I was looking for in this game. I was like, I'm ready to work. I'm ready to read. I'm was, ready to piece things together. Yeah. yeah. I was waiting for the story. I was waiting for the narrative. I was waiting for that thing to happen, you know? And I'm I'm still in this game and I've gone back in the little shippy thing. And I'm still waiting. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, surely it's gonna happen. Cause I, I can't just wander around without context or without and there are any so many sort options. of story. 
Um, especially once they introduced the combat. I don't know why they made it so that you can only ever ammo up from those machines. You can never find a stray bullet. It's like flesh. Like, surely you can yank it out of anything. Yep. If you imagine, like, you know, why not? The, the, there's these creatures, some of them have eyes, and, like, you know, you can pilfer the bodies, and each eye is worth one bullet in the normal pistol. Like, something. You know, fuck it, why not? Something that yeah, yeah, rewards just you something. for... Something. <laughs> Yeah, some more game stuff would have been definitely appreciated. And and before anybody is just like, yeah, so it's not the thing you expected then, is it? And it's just like, a game? I don't a know. game? <laughs> it's, uh, it's just strange that this is the game at this, this point. But, you know, it's fine, again, because I still had no context for how far into the game I had gotten. But we're looking at a strong, like, 30% now. Um, in order to access this this series of pods... Uh, I didn't realize this, and I don't think it's intuitive at all. You need to power up your little device there. It needs to be more than one tick on it. It needs to be all four ticks. Like, okay? I didn't know this yet. I was just going to explore. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like it's almost like a timer. Um, because the, you don't see that... Um, your character doesn't look at the rings and try to associate the rings with the ones in the cylinder. Because you have the four red nodes and the in the receptacle and then you eventually accumulate four white nodes onto the cylinder as you progress and then you come back to do this uh, puzzle here um, but it's one of those oh I don't think this is how that happens so I'll carry on you know Yeah. a lot of yeah, the time it's just like you know button flashy thing this that and the mm -hmm. other exit and it goes no and you're like okay oh. guess I'll continue yeah, see you in see 30 minutes or I, whatever I, the progress in this for me was indistinguishable from just bashing around at stuff and just kind of hoping a lot of the time. I, I had no idea. I, was, I can yeah. recognize when the game is like, that ain't it. But I wouldn't necessarily, if someone in chat had said, no, that's supposed to work, I'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Again, I can't, I can't <laughs> tell the difference. I, I don't get a sense that like, oh, of course I need to do blah, blah, blah. It's like, I got to do something, something at some point. I don't know. So yeah, this is... Uh... And while you're all doing this, again, you just walk in all these dead ends that show you basically nothing. Just like, oh, okay, not going this way. Not going this way. Is there anything to collect? No. Anything to see? Not really. Well, guess I'm going back to the other way until I finally find all these pieces that I need. Yeah, and this section is... I don't remember what even problem there is to solve. I think you... You have to find... accumulate the four nodes for the cylinder. Yeah. Um, and it's, there's like a big old fan running, and you have to find the switch to turn it off. And there's like a blocked pathway at one point, and you have to put acid on the bodies that are in the way. But like mm -hmm. it is as simple as pressing a button. There's no like. Remember in like Amnesia, where it's like you gotta find out what materials create the acid and then go to each right, respective right, area yeah. to find those bottles to be able to combine them. Yeah, um, so this here is one of the yeah that's one of the four you do four of these little spinny puzzles um they do get slightly more complex as you go i suppose with the last one is halfway covered up and you have yeah. to now that you know how it works and the sounds associated with it you can figure out the left half um very very simplistic but totally fine in terms of you know acquiring the four uh, nodes for the cylinder the little rings yeah. But yeah, you go to the four places, you do four of these, and that's that. That's uh, that's really it. There's not a there's not like a puzzle so much. If you could even call this one a puzzle, which I'm hesitant. I'm to. hesitant on this one, yeah, because it's uh, you'd be like, well, it kind of is right. You got to wait until they line up, and then you hit go, and it's like, yeah, yeah. But that's uh, like I said, that's sort of that the dividing line between what is a puzzle and what is just sort of the the basic problem solving. Like no one looks at a no one looks at a locked door with a key next to it. And this they're like, oh, puzzle, that's a yeah. puzzle. Yeah, yeah, I have to put the key into the door and then turn it so that it unlocks the door and now I can progress. It's like, no, that's it's not really a puzzle. That's just... Yeah, and if you increase it I, I probably by dimension, it. like, okay, what do you have to turn it left, right, left to open it? And like, it's still not a puzzle. And you're like, left, right, left, or left or right, depending on deciphering, like, some of the code on the wall or something you're like it's still oh, yeah that's, i mean it's getting it's there something yeah and, and I, maybe that's all that puzzles are they're like solving problems that are much more complex and have like a rule set and are almost games 
Well, um, what was um, I wish Moriarty was here. He did something on the puzzles, didn't he? He was talking about the puzzle in that one game that did, oh. just didn't seem to make any level of sense. Uh, yeah, no, I remember what you were talking about. Didn't we watch the video on EFAP, I think? Um, we he, I think he showed that section to us and tried to have us guess what you were supposed to do right, and, yeah. and, and what the puzzle meant, and none of us could figure it out. Um, it was mm. during that discussion we had talked about that a good puzzle, you sort of have an understanding of what you're supposed to do because not knowing what you're supposed to do is not just really frustrating, but you're already you've 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 lost that intuitive element of knowing what progress looks like or knowing what the ultimate end result should be so that you can work towards it. Yeah. It's yeah, interesting because I, I just I, I just played through Silent Hill one, two, three. And those games have some pretty neat puzzles. Uh where the collection of things is just the beginning of the thing. So one of the, I think this is the most famous one. That's like one of tarot cards, uh, all the way at the end of Silent Hill 3. And you have to collect them all throughout the area, blah, blah, blah. And then you have like a, like a note or a book or something. And that's like this text where it says, oh, this guy is positioned there and here and there, but it's like vague. So you have to figure out where we actually need to put the puzzle, uh, the, the puzzle pieces slash the tarot cards. And it can be a bit, a bit of a brain scratcher because you have to actually figure out where you put them. Like, for example, uh, the moon is above this creature and then you have to kind of figure out, okay, with the creature, do they mean this card or the other card? And if, he, if that goes up there, where can I put the other one? And where do I need to don't put any cards in the uh, free spaces and everything? And yeah, those I would call puzzles and not... I'm going to wait for this pin to be in here and then press the button. Ah, and now I do it again. And again. And now I'll go to the next one. It's like, eh. If you notice the animations for like everything, as much as they are detailed and sometimes even have variations, uh, they, they take a while. And when, when yeah. I say a while, you might be like, really? What? Four seconds? And I'm like, as opposed to one or two? That'll add up. Yep. It does add up. A lot of the stuff <laughs> does add up. Um... There is a I'm trying to think here of a sort of like I had a bit of a uh, you know what actually I do know what, I remember what I was going to say but we'll get to it a little bit later when we get to what I would call the the hardest puzzle in the game and that's down the road though not too far because nothing's too far away in this game it's very <laughs> not short too far. yeah um, so you get that fully powered up and then you can oh this this yeah. this thing here this was um the thing. I... I found that one kind of neat. I kind of wish there was this more was... of this one. I thought it was... Yeah, I was hoping this was... I thought it had more potential, I guess, is what I would say. Yeah, you yeah, could do all this... kinds of things with this. If you have these little mini puzzles like this, because you have to rotate the cylinder so that eventually at the end, all of the nodes uh, on the receptacle hit the nodes on the, the cylinder itself, right? Like, that's neat. I enjoyed doing I think... that. And... Uh, yeah. just just about this puzzle and the one that we were talking about what we first did it's like you've got all the animations in place why haven't you repeated them that's like free real estate yeah yeah the first one's easy then the second one adds a little like a barrier that might make it a little bit more difficult and then the third one's just even slightly more difficult and then you know there you go I mean they sort of did that with uh, yeah the, the how you get the cylinder nodes uh, the rings where the, they, they spin around and you have to hit them in time. It's like, it's very, very basic, but they do technically get more complicated as you go. Um, the degree to which they do is not much, but they, like, they have the right idea. Um, this guy crawls out and dies. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't clear on this. I was like, so, I was like okay. I was like, oh, what's happening yeah. here? That's interesting. It's like, oh, he's dead. Uh... I guess I'll leave. <laughs> what, what what was he in here for? What's the point? I don't. I don't. He's like in this in this. What do you even call this? Like a pod? I don't know. This pod it's... looks different than the ones from before, but he looks different than the guy from before. So yeah. And I, I, I don't know. We'll discuss it. It's just like, oh, it's the creepy birthing pod, and it's like, okay, it sounds like you just described as much as you possibly could that anybody else might yeah. be able to also yeah, describe. Yeah, sounds like the thing that we all I, knew you, by you could... looking at it. Yeah. Well, maybe you could say those were 
supposed to be soldiers at some point because you get the ammo thing right next to the pod. So maybe that's like also a thing. the health thing. Uh, oh yeah, and the health thing, yeah. So Those maybe doctors. maybe some kind of maybe soldier flim flim doctor. Doctors, that's, why there's, that's why there's health next to them when you. But, you and that's the thing. I don't know how much of it is any any of it is deliberate, right? Like, is the fact that I'm this gun is this expected and normal of this world, or did it congeal? I don't know. Like in the same way that everything is sort of in flux. Um, especially when you attach this gun to um, the creature that jumps on you, right? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Has that even happened yet? I don't think so, right? Nope. Uh, not, not yet, no. Not yet. Um, that is a interesting thing as well. With that the... is a, that's a thing that happened in the game. That's a thing that happens. That's a thing in the game. Oh, yeah, this Isn't is... weird? Like, yeah, it is. It's weird and gross. The fair 40% plus into the game now, and it's just like... Damn, you know? Uh, yeah, at this point I was desperate for something to happen. Like, yeah, maybe give me something. Help explain to anybody who's finding trouble understanding that. It's like, oh, it has attached itself oh, to me. Oh, it has attached? Okay. Wait, when did I that happen? I missed that part, yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, yeah, a little creature jumps on you and, like, digs itself into you. And throughout the game it starts just clawing at your torso or belly yeah. or whatever. And it's yeah, gradually like small. taking over you. That'll become relevant later on. But uh, but you get to yeah, use like, the extra hands sometimes. You get yeah access to two <laughs> bonus hands. We'll talk about that for sure when we get on later on. So um, yeah, I don't think I've found any consoles yet for ammo or for health. So get that when we get that. But um, so someone's probably like, "What do you mean you want stuff to happen? Stuff is happening." I should be like, "So this feels incomplete. We've got." The explore, exploring a world and some very light puzzle solving. I feel like I am playing a very early version of the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's and interesting it's even... because I, I remember, I think James said that in chat while I was playing. Like when they announced the game or advertised it, they advertised it as like a like a lived in uh, base you, you go through. Uh like basically it says there's like people here maybe or like creatures i mean you have creatures but i wouldn't call it lived in like if you tell me it's lived in i think about like a bar or a city where people are rummaging around or there's like random wildlife going around or something like that lived in means something else in a world of flesh monsters i don't know <laughs> i guess i guess it's the difference between just having a room uh like some some just just empty Gary's mod room, and then going in and filling it with a shelf and a dresser, and there's some food, and then maybe there's a you know there's a waste basket with some newspapers on the thing. You know, you make it look like people have actually lived here and it's furnished, um, and it has the res it has the uh, the remnants of habitants uh, from before. You know that kind of aspect, which I guess I I'd certainly call this world lived in for certain, but. I wonder if I think about this world being lived in in the same way that I would. It, it goes to that environmental storytelling thing. It's like, well, if you have a really lived in world, I wonder what sort of emergent clues and stories come out of that, you know, element <laughs> of the, your environment. Also, if you'll give me a moment, I'm going to top off my drink. Just no a problem. Yes. <sighs> Which uh, takes us to the Usel. Um, was that again? Is that like, the moving like, the the fence around, or what is it? I'm trying to think. If we, it's hard to tell sometimes if this is a sort of connecting area, or one of the bigger hub areas. Um, I think we're almost at one of the bigger hub areas with all the like elevators and stuff. Oh, those. Oh, yeah, there, there they are. You're just right next to them. Yeah, you're in this big area. We have to get the. Those capsule elevators, or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, there's a, um, place. a clear place you're trying to go, but the capsule elevator thingy breaks. So you need to find a replacement. So you have to go around this whole area, moving mm -hmm. around one you get uh, uh, to, to put it on, and then you, you'll be golden to get out. But um, get, I think, a decent amount of uh, combat now. Mostly in the form of uh, your little mm -hmm. pokey gun in there. Yeah, and oh boy, that pokey thing is... Well, it is a thing. <laughs> yeah, hopefully uh, I'll be able to show some of that in this playthrough. But 
Yeah, um, you just need to make your way around this place, and you'll end up with uh, another one. Oh, form. there they oh, are. Here we go. Ah, oh, I see. You, you, you're using the same strats that I did. I just need. <laughs> Which corners. are the only strats you can do? <laughs> I just, every time I just wanted corners so that they couldn't fire their bullshit at me. Yeah. So um, basically, how this fighting works is: Oh no, there's an enemy. They can spit things at you. Let me quickly go to cover somewhere, if there is any. Poke them twice, because after that your weapon has to uh, recharge, reload, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and as soon as that happened, you have to r quickly run towards the enemy again. Poke him twice, and then run away again. Because for some reason they also decided to make it an, uh, an, an odd number for kills. It's five hits for these bigger ones. So just to fuck you off, you have to do it three times and have to be lucky that you don't get hit by these guys. Or that but these guys are not even the them. these guys are not even the worst ones because there's these aren't little, even the fucking little, worst ones. The yeah. little chicken ones, the chicken, little, ones little chicken ones. Those can fuck right off. So uh, um, yeah, as you can see, I was just like, All right, I guess that's uh, the introduction to the combat. Dot dot dot. Well, yeah, uh, if you want to call it that. Sort of a keep going situation. But this is uh, one of the biggest areas, I would say, in terms of just like a, a, if one could call it a grand puzzle. But again, it's more so just hitting buttons and switching levers, sort of thing. I think this zone is the biggest in the game? Probably, yeah. I think this is the biggest in the game. It's also the most annoying because it's got enemies in it. Lots yeah. of them. Um, they do that again in, a, in the area with the big dude who you keep hurting over and over again. Right, yeah, yeah. A lot of enemies in that one, too. But yeah, there's the oh. second enemy type. Chicken man. And he, uh... He only takes two hits to kill with this thing, but he also has a projectile that basically never misses. Yeah, and can snipe you from pretty far away. Yeah. It, it tracks you, so if you are, um... If you're moving to the left, it will anticipate where you're going. So you have to kind of stop moving once it releases Fires, its yeah. view. Yeah, um, annoying. and if you and if you if you run towards those fuckers, you better make sure you hit, because otherwise you're yeah. Screwed. You'll take two hits of damage for sure if you don't hit. Fun, but yeah. So I'm just obviously trying. That's to... just the gameplay in this. The combat, it's not fun. No, it's really tedious. Uh, I was looking for every opportunity to not fight enemies that I could, not because it was, oh, it's dangerous and resources are scarce. It's like, no, it's, like, it's just not fun to do, and it yeah. sucks. Also, here's, here's the thing. I think Mahler and I are pretty similar in those approaches. If we're in, like, in a game that has like scarce resources, especially for weapons, I think we both go for melee as much as possible. Yeah. Not to waste uh, any of the yeah. ammo you have. But in this one, at some point, I was like, I just, I'm going to use all the ammo I have because I'm so sick of running towards the enemies, especially if there's like yeah. three of them. There's like no way for you to not get hit when there's three of them at once. Absolutely. Nope. Once a second enemy enters the mix, things get really bad. And you you just don't want to engage with the mechanics that have been put into the game. You you don't want to put up with it. You don't want to do it. I uh I think as well that... Part of why I was trying to kill them was I didn't want to end up getting like running away from one and then bumping into another and being like, well, I'm dead now. Mm -hmm. um, I want to try and wipe them out as I found them, but also because, uh, you know, I thought I was fully engaged with the game. Let's get these mechanics really run through. And yeah, at this point, I think I'm still relatively positive about it, but I'm already feeling like the hmm. And I'm hoping we'll see mm -hmm. some examples as I play this. Of uh, you will run up to them shoot with this thing and it'll just not hit them and you're like oh that definitely happened yeah. with me yes and I, I and i guess maybe out of all of us i came out with the most in terms of resources and stuff um probably yeah. i'm a pretty shooter oriented person and i'm pretty tactical in the way i approach things and even then like if if i could tell my past self something i'd just say just fucking unload on them man you just i you end the you ended the game with full everything i expected there to be more um, I expected there to be more enemies, more pickups, more things that you got. Mm -hmm. It just sort of, once you're done with this zone, you don't ever need it again. It's 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 basically done. The the guns are only used for this section and nowhere else. What do you mean? Well, it's the, when you say this section, I guess this area, this zone. 
Um, yeah, because once you get to the big old castle at the end, you don't need them. It's yeah, you oh, just need the, you just need the plunger yeah. to kill the. It's, just, uh, it's weird to say this zone because like, in terms of zones, how many would you say there even are? I would say three. There's a walking segment in between one and two, but I wouldn't call that its own zone. Okay. Mm. But yeah, it's already uh, noticeably clunky, and you'd be like, well, what's wrong with it? And it's like, well, it's the most basic combat possible. I have an incredibly small amount of even options to harm something, and they have a very select few ways to attack me, and we don't really sync very well, uh, and there's no... I think it was someone else That's to you. That's a good way to describe it. You don't synchronize yeah. very well with the enemies you're fighting. It's almost like you belong to... Um, two different games you don't feel like you and them sort of belong in the same um game well, so that's just an annoyance i got there introducing the tentacle enemy right next to having to deal with this guy when i didn't even oh look at this yep and they only you only had one shot and you get hit yeah this is just not fun at this point <sighs> annoying as fuck that these enemies that is really here. annoying um, yeah, the, the combat, like I said, it's it is a make every time I saw an enemy, I would do what I could to let them waddle around and then leave. Um, I w I'd let them pass. I'd let them go away. Uh, eventually, they crawl around and then leave. I found out with these tentacle boys, you can just run past them. Uh, if you just run past them, I don't think they have enough time to deploy, aim and shoot at you. Okay. Uh, you yeah, just, what I found is that you can indeed... Uh, mostly escape most enemies by either waiting until they're gone or running past them and then they despawn anyway, which is just like, oh wow. Yeah. But don't worry, guys, at least you don't have to use the shooter mechanics. Hooray! <laughs> cool, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this game was becoming, uh, it's almost like we've now revealed the, I guess I wouldn't have known this at the time, but that is basically the full set of mechanics. As, as much as there are different forms of ammo we still gotta get, um, I just mean the the potential of we we started to engage the uh, there are enemies that are around puzzles to solve and environments to get past like that is the full experience and arguably we are halfway through the game now. Yeah, um, pretty much. This is pretty much the halfway point, um, which is kind of strange looking back and realizing how little that there actually was. When you're playing a game, you don't often have that sort of uh, perception of time when you're engaged in playing the game, running around, doing the little puzzles, hitting the buttons. But, it, yeah, it's kind of crazy how short it really was. Mm hmm So, yeah, these little health machines and ammo machines I've got myself. I think I've picked up the ammo, but I haven't picked up the gun yet. I was getting a little bit confused. Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll get to that in a oh, second. This. So this is the puzzles, the, the new the, set. I call this the, um, I guess call it the light puzzle, because you have to light up all the thingies. Mm -hmm. um, when you get to when we get to the last version of this puzzle, I think it is easily the most difficult puzzle in the game. Uh, in fact, I think so by a considerable margin. It, it stood out to me as a difficulty spike. I liked it a lot. I really enjoyed. In fact, I would say that solving the puzzle was the highlight of the game. Um, but I think that it was interesting how the last version of this puzzle where there is an extra two nodes attached, it's so much more difficult than the other puzzles in the game. It kind of, it just stood out to me. And maybe it was just how I did the puzzle, or, I mean, I think I'm pretty good with puzzles, but this one is, I, I enjoyed figuring it out. And it was really satisfying when I finished it, but I was like, wow, this is like clearly the di most difficult thing in the game. Yeah, because the other puzzles, um, once you understand how they work, it's just a matter of time. Uh, this was the only puzzle where I was like, mechanics are yeah. a little more complicated. Stop, think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have to, yeah, stop and think. I know what things do. I need to line them all up. Get this rotated this way, this rotated this way. Align the little bridge connector this way. And then, yeah, this one actually took some proper thought. Uh, this is it. This is an absolutely. This is a standalone sort of puzzle that you'd find, that isn't just a like a short mini puzzle, and, and I liked it. It was good. It just yeah. stood out as being way more difficult than anything else in the game. And once you uh, you have to beat one of these per, I think like level slash floor, 
Um, yeah, yeah. Something like I think that, it's yeah. three in total, right? And then you'll unlock the... Uh... Yeah, I think they add a node each time that you have to light up, so it gets progressively... Uh, mechanics remain yeah. identical, but it gets more difficult because you have to have them all coordinated uh, better. Yeah. And yeah you have more let's... variables to take into account, yeah. Just skip four. Yeah, this is still me solving the area. I mean, that's what you do in the area. You run, uh, go you through. You walk around. You hit the, the buttons. Yeah. yeah. Make the, do those it, yeah. puzzles. Uh, those puzzles were a welcome relief from wandering around, uh, trying to avoid combat as much as possible, and just hitting buttons that would progress the game. The I, I legitimately think the two high points in this game were the the light puzzle and the cylinder. Oh, you got they the. Just, Got the gun there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we've got the pistol now. Oh, well, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's weird. I'm still unclear if it's actually a pistol or a shotgun. Or a shotgun. Because the... I don't so, know either. Well, here's the thing. The crosshair is there for a reason. And you know how normally when you have crosshair, crosshairs, uh, it's like, oh, if you see this this one, I know it's this kind of weapon. So in Shotguns the, the, will often have big open circles. Like this one. Sniper yeah. rifles have a pinpoint thing. Assault exactly. rifles have like crosshairs that get bigger as you fire. Yeah, there, there's a lot of times there's some connection between yeah. what's happening what, or what the gun's going to do and what your crosshairs look like. Yeah. Yeah, but this one, when it, when it looks like you have like a pistol kind of thingy in your hand, it looks like it has a shotgun uh, scope thingy uh, circle, I mean. Also, uh, this is another enemy type, and this was the first thought I had. Uh, he just went behind the thing. Oh, that works really well. <laughs> He's not very good. This, um, and I said it on stream at the time. This is just gamer shit, man. This is what you do. I've played yeah. so many games that the first thought you have with a lot of enemies is how do they deal with the environment? And, uh, if you can't, as a developer, deal with this, you're gonna get exploited. Why wouldn't it be? Um, yeah, it's yeah just, I don't want to die. I'd oh, consider okay. doing this in real life. Like, if a fucking Absolutely. thing was coming at me, I'd put stuff between us. If you didn't program it to be able to go around Look at it, that. or sense that as a wall. There are times where I'm, like, um, shooting the thing and it doesn't connect. Like, yeah. fucking annoying. I still don't know if, if, the, if the range is inconsistent or the hitboxes of the enemy. Uh, I think it's the hitbox, most likely. Um, and there is an element of, if you're shooting a moving projectile out of something, at what point does your weapon actually have an active hitbox in it. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the times, like as you are, like maybe as you're stabbing a sword in a game, it has an active hitbox as it is going forward, but as you pull it back, it doesn't have a hitbox anymore, and it's just an animation for you pulling it back to, you know, then recharging essentially. No. Um, so I'm not exactly certain how it's sort of programmed. No. That's funny, you, you made this big guy even easier than... He already was, because I found these guys actually to be the easiest to fight for the most part. Because you kind of just bait their dash, I guess, and then you walk to the side, hit them twice, rinse and repeat. I'm actually annoyed looking at this replay because of how many times the gun doesn't work. Yeah. It's really fucking annoying. Uh, really annoying. It should be generous, it shouldn't be harsh. Yeah. No By the way, I never killed any of the enemies like this. I, I, I think I did what the game wanted you to do and pull up the gate before it could come through. Um, so it's interesting to see my playthrough kind of mirrored with yours where we just took com two completely different routes. Yeah. Uh, I was very disappointed by this because I was like, uh-oh. means that the game's going to have big old holes in it where I can just take full advantage of it. Uh-huh. And uh, one might argue, well, then you just choose not to, right? And it's like, I don't think that's how it works. Uh, not, not how that works. We had that conversation before. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not an attitude that you want to foster with players, where you leave it up to players to balance their own experience. Um, yeah, that seems that's something it's... you want to leave to the veteran players who are trying to go out of their way to give themselves a challenge once they know the mechanics. But especially for a first playthrough. You don't want to rely on players to be like, no, no, that's not that's not with the spirit of the game to do this. You yeah. should test the game and make sure that this sort of thing isn't uh, isn't doable at all. It's all summons discussion again. 
from Elden Ring with the mimic tier and the, just those summons in general. Yeah, just don't use they summons. They make fights like, trivial. I... It's like, yeah, but I'm doing my first playthrough. I want to use all the things that I can because I know this game is supposed to be really hard because I played all of them. But now you took a lot of the difficulty away from me. At least that um, was intentional in this game. That's obviously like the developers are oh, yeah, like, yeah. oh. And this is the thing about it. I'm like, didn't didn't somebody show you this is possible? Did nobody in your playtesters find this out? Do you guys, have you not played video games before? And that... You gotta test, yeah. Makes you start to wonder. Yeah. Because I remember that happening to, to me with one of those big guys in a different area. I think shortly before you go up a little elevator or something. And there that guy got stuck on the... Uh, like just on the little thing that goes, little slope that goes up, and couldn't deal with it for like a minute, and then at some point he says, "Oh, I guess the AI reactivated," and was like, "Oh, I need to go around." Whoops. Oh, the clunky movement there as well. Like I got stuck, and then it like pushed me up. I was just like, "Just kill me, fuck this!" Like I'm not losing yeah. that much health. Um, just, just awkward. So. Uh, also, I think that's all the enemy types that you encounter. That's all of them, right? Oh, there's one I more. So. We'll get to um, him later. Well, I mean, no, just in the general yeah, game, yeah, yeah. non-bossy yeah. ones. Uh, that's that's bossy, all what? all there is. <laughs> a game like this wouldn't have a boss fight. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. So it's yeah. legitimately weird thinking about it, especially it is, when yeah. you realize, oh yeah, this this game had a boss fight at the end. That was weird. So uh, this is the next big area. You've got to act find a way to activate these three. You know, stuff like this is kind of annoying, by the way. You can access all three of those if you just walked over those little gates. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you need to do a better job at actually presenting me barriers that I can't believe my character would do. Because if that was my ass, I'd be like, yeah, I'm just hopping over and activating all three. Not uncommon in video games, but still annoying whenever it comes up. It's... I don't think there's ever an excuse for it. It's just a reality that, yeah, you could have done better for that, oh, but you yeah. didn't. And there are this, plenty uh, of opportunities in this game where they have gates that you can't surpass. I was like, why don't you just do more of them? Why did you do one, like, if you can try and get a good look at it here, like, that is easy to get past. Yeah, so did can... we talk about the big, the big man in the room? Even a fat guy can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. A fat guy would do it the most because it means less walking overall. Less walking, yeah, baby. <laughs> So, Did we talk about the big uh, floaty fat guy in the room? Yeah, there's a big old guy who this machine yeah. is a part of, I guess. And uh, the more he's, you complete this, I think he isn't. Teams. I think he isn't part of the machine. I think he just. No, I think he's grown around it. Yeah. Okay. Like the more he you, other growths. The more you do things with the machine, the more you hurt him, and the more he's upset and he stares at you. Yeah, yeah he watches you as you go from place to place around the room. <clears throat> And just stares at you. He he doesn't seem to have. Oh god! Like, look at this. I'm just dead. Oh yeah, this area. I mm -hmm. I missed a shot, so I'm fucked now. Cause the chicken guy. Look yep. at this. Oh god, it's so painful. But I I wonder if this was also the, this is what eventually became of what was going to originally be a moral choice mechanic where you could, circumvent using the machine to to not kill the creature. Yeah. Or you could be like, fuck it, I'm just going to rip the creature open to get the yeah. pathways that I need to get through. It, it, it gives me the vibe of that original puzzle, though this one is, there is no alternate way to do it. Yeah, you have no choice. You just make him suffer, and you're like, okay. Yeah, and you feel bad, but it's like, okay, I guess yeah, it seems to be crazy evil world, so whatever. docile creature just chilling yeah. out there on the, on the elevator, like, oh, I guess I'm yeah. just going through his belly with these tunnels I like that how, open up and bridges i like how close he gets to you like his face swerves around to yeah. look at you and he's just like you, know, you feel he's like why yeah, are you doing this <laughs> yeah it's like what was up with that i was just chilling i imagine that too i was thinking that he was gonna like why are you doing this to me man or if he even understood that you were the one doing this to him and he's just in pain i'm like man i'm sorry the game just making me do it yeah, yeah there's nothing sorry, else i don't to have do. a saw sorry i don't have a saw for you if we would have a big saw maybe we could have saved you just keep that scoop away from me. You know, those yeah, things are deadly. Don't you scoops are deadly. Yeah. Everyone knows that scoops are deadly and saws are good. So it's probably worth mentioning at this point, uh, I'm still trying to thoroughly explore, hence my three-hour runtime into the stream when the average completion for this is three to four hours. And I'm still... This is about 60-70% of the way through. Um, I... I, I look around everywhere and and I find something. Me and Rags talked about this one. This is the one that really kills it for me. 
Uh, I yeah. don't know what the timestamp's going to be. Um, hopefully, we'll see it eventually. In fact, I'll try and skip forward a little bit. Wouldn't so want to miss it, it now. But I, I find. Think... Oh, I think this might be it. This is. Oh, I know. Oh, is this I, the I one? Have the same reaction. I Look at this. Like, say, holy part shit. of this is Go because ahead. it's noteworthy. Part of it is because there's only three things to do in the game at all. So. I was like, I've been rewarded for looking around. Yay. Here's some ammo. Mm -hmm. Sweet. This is like awesome. literally the... Uh... Oh, no, this is the other place. This is a different place. I know the place we're all thinking about. This isn't the one. Isn't it's the it's one. in this zone. Right. It's in this area, but that wasn't yeah. the particular well, one. Well, you open it up, and then two of the big guys spawn, and j just a swarm of enemies spawns, right? That's the one you mean? Yes. It's yeah, when yeah. you go... It, it's it's in one of the little rings. I think is almost in. T I think it is the only thing that you can find in this game that isn't obvious. You have to go around a corner to find it. Low bar, but you know it is what it is. <laughs> and then the game punishes you. Like here's some ammunition. Also, you have to fight two of the big chunguses. They spawn right next to you. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, I think oh. That's health. So I'm trying to this find it. Yeah, this is the one. Oh, this is. Yeah, the, you're exactly where it was just now. Yeah. Yeah, that was the that was the spot, the first time you show up. Yeah, and have mercy if you didn't reload your weapons before. Because then you need to to hide a little bit and start reloading your shit, because you probably just thought, oh hey, I found something neat here. For, finally, ammo, and then you just rewarded get for exploration. This is is this it or have I gone past it? I think this is it, right? Oh, I think that's I it. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is it, yeah. That should be it. Yeah, I think so. super, super useful, and it's just like sweet because I use my ammo relatively. I uh, I try to use the physical thing whenever I can, but if a situation where I need to use this, it's like, okay, fine. Um, And I think I have no idea what's about to happen. Yeah. Fortunately. I'm like, okay, cool. This is like a dead end then. But really is just for ammo. Alrighty. Yeah, big one comes out behind you, right there. Mm-hmm. And there you got hit from behind, I think. Yeah, and then another one, yeah, because they both come in from both ends of the hallway, yeah. And then I'm like, all right, you need to get the fuck out. Now, luckily, this gun does go through them, as I discovered. Oh, does it? So, if you, if you shoot right, I think you can come out ahead... Like it, this can be worth your while. I think you come out with one shot more than you entered if yeah. you're able to get really get your values worth on each shot. But I don't know if that's intentional or intuitive. I, think, I didn't I didn't realize yeah. that was a thing when I played it. Yeah, I think I just discovered it. Um, I noticed they were lined up and I was going to shoot anyway, so I took care of kind of watching to see if it was, you know, a thing. It was. Um, but yeah, this, how many times does that pop up? Virtually never. This felt like a betrayal. Uh, you discover a secret, and then they put enemies in your way that essentially nullifies the secret and costs you health more than likely. Yeah. Well, it, the the issue is that it costs you the thing that you are there to get. Um, if you had a room, let's say you're playing Resident Evil or whatever, and you. You go into a closet or you go into a little back area and you get a bunch of money, right? There's a bunch of pesetas on the ground. Um, however, you see that? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I saw that. Fucking but, cringe. But, I hate it. <laughs> so you, you go into this back room, there's a bunch of money on the ground and then enemies come. I was like, okay, that's that's fair. I, you know, in exchange for fighting the enemies, I get money. All right. Cash, yeah. It would be different where. You go into a room or you go into an area, you get 10 bullets and nine bullets worth of enemies show up. So if you perform excellently, you come out with one extra bullet than you did before. That's just like, don't even bother. Just don't even don't even do it. You're, you're just you're that's essentially punishing players by wasting their time and likely you know taking their health away. Yep. You don't want to you don't want to consume the thing you're giving players um as a reward you know yeah and so um exploring has gained me fucking nothing in this and now it's starting to take things away from me uh which is making me just a very frustrated player i don't even want to do this anymore sort of thing 
in this uh, segment here, when the enemies come at you, I actually went around that left little divot in the corner, and they had a lot of pathfinding trouble trying to get me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just kind of hit them while they were trying to walk towards me when they couldn't for whatever reason. When uh, were you hit while you were stunned on the ground there? Or I did think you get so. It's down? unclear. I don't even know. I don't even know if this game when they made that it they sucked. were. You they... you're really playing with fire if you do that in the game. If you're gonna crowd control a player then you need to be very careful about how you implement that because there are few things worse than knocking a player down because they get hit by one move mm -hmm. and then you're defenseless and you don't have any control and while you're recovering enemies just wallop on you it's not fun it could be balanced potentially sure but it's just one of those like it's not fun to watch that happen and you should probably avoid it yep she you see that, by the way, push. if you don't hold E for just long enough, it'll just undo the, the healing. And it's like... I right, so I didn't imagine that. I thought I, I imagined that Another when I played. Um, so, yeah, that's great. Once you once you know that going in, I'm fine with that. It prevents you accidentally hitting E and healing yourself when you don't want to. I found that that um, would be the, a good reason for it, but it wasn't working as well as I would have liked it to. It was uh, like... It, I would hold it for like two seconds and be like, that's enough, right? And then it pulls it back out, and I was like, oh, fuck. Felt clunky. The difference between tapping and holding should be pretty obvious to the game instead of me wondering how long I should be holding it down for. And um, I did accidentally give myself two heals once when I didn't want to because I wasn't sure how long I was supposed to be uh, holding it. I gotcha. Uh. Yeah, clearly I'm like trying to find an efficient way through this part. The the combat is so different than you'd expect from and this is so that yeah, this gets to a point where people watching this, like, you've seen a lot of shooter gameplay. This is a shooter. Yeah. This and... is I think in just watching your clips, you have done far more shooting than I ever did. <laughs> I did everything in my power to avoid fights to the point where like in here I went back up the elevator when I saw the when I saw the enemies coming out I just noped and I ran away and then when I, when I came back down they had wandered off um, I was just so unhappy with the actual combat that I just uh, elected to avoid it as much as possible I did not want to engage in the mechanics as they were presented to me which kind of brings us not generally stand. something you want to have players do Brings us to a conversation about genre. How does it work? It's like it's usually descriptive of what events or things are in the actual thing. Atmosphere, tone, genres are yes. Stuff. Genres are descriptive, mm -hmm. not prescriptive. Important to note. Um, um, and so a lot of people come away saying you shouldn't be calling this game a shooter, and I'm just like, um, it, uh, <laughs> like I don't know if um, if a game was in a position where you could run it in first or third person. It's up to you. I think there's a couple games that do that, right? Like, I think is GTA a game that offered that at some point? They've got um, got. Why am I blanking on games that have done that? There's plenty. All Battlefront Two did that. You could be in first person or third person. So if someone said, "What yeah, is it, first Daisy. person or third okay. person?" It's like, well, at that point, it's just going to be dependent it's on either. which you yeah, choose. Yeah, they're both there. Mm -hmm. And if that was to be said about this game, it's like, well, if you engage the shooter mechanics, it's a shooter. But if you don't, it's not. Very strange, but I guess that's that's a thing. And so, I mean, technically, uh, generally, if you have a puzzle game, you can't choose to not engage with the puzzle mechanics because yeah. they are critical to progress. But I suppose, yeah, in a shooter game, if you want to, yeah, you can get through some games that are shooter games by not shooting either. Also, well, like if someone said, "Hey, is Dishonored a first-person shooter?" I'm like, "Yeah, it, it, it's a first-person shooter, but it's it it, it has a lot of stealth elements." And it's not really a traditional first-person shooter, but yeah, you could call it that. Um, if one was able to complete, let's just say, COD 4, by simply running and waiting, and then your uh, AI allies will clear the area as long as you get to certain areas, and you could complete the whole game by doing that, like on easy mode or whatever, um, could you? Could I then say it's not a shooter, it's a, it's a runner or something? <laughs> the genre discussion is... It's, it's a generally helpful thing to, in a quick way, describe elements of some yeah. um, piece of media or product. So once the usefulness of explaining what the genre is runs out, it is no longer something that's really worth discussing. Uh, 
at least in this context. So if someone was to say, tell me about Scorn, is it a first person shooter? I'd say, well, yes, but ultimately the, the mechanics are very simple. And you'd go into all of the caveats for that because you don't feel like, like you wouldn't have to add caveats if someone said, hey, is Call of Duty 4 a first person shooter? You'd be like, yeah, it is. Stop, done. Uh, yeah. it, it, it perfectly describes that game. Whereas this game, it has the asterisks. Yes, it's a first-person shooter, but it's only in one section of the game. It's really simplistic, and the enemies are not fun to fight. It's 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 only through technicality, is it? Yeah, and um, <laughs> but that so like the reason that comes up is players' frustrations, and so people complaining about the combat, they're like, yeah, but it's not a shooter, and it's like. I don't care what it is, the combat mechanics are bad. Yeah. And that's what it boils down to. It's just bad mechanics. It's if awful. You, the mechanics are present. They are to be used at your leisure, and they don't work very well. It's like the idea that, like, yeah, and you know what? The flying mechanics in games without flying aren't very good, are they? And it's like, no, they're not there. They're just not. Um, and that's yeah. a different thing. <laughs> These are here, and they're not very well done. And depending on your approach with the game, which I think is this is I'm not doing something crazy. I'm like, you gave me guns, you gave me ammo, which, by the way, I spend healthy amounts of it, and I don't run out. So to me, all of you know, like if you give me a gun and there's only three shots throughout the entire game of Scorn, I'd be like, okay, yeah, it's not really much of a shooter. But I killed a shit ton of things in this game. Absolutely. So the idea that it's like it doesn't count as a shooter, though, and I'm just like, I, I don't even know what, what are you trying to say? I'm, I'm just... Uh, yeah, in retrospect, I kind of marveled at how stingy I was thinking that there would be more, you know, elements of the game to shoot. Um, yeah, because you want to you wanna preserve your ammo. It's like, oh, that's maybe going to be like a big boss fight or something that you you need the ammo you wanna for. You want to keep handy, yeah. You want to yeah. keep, like, in case I need it, in case I get to that room where it swamps me with enemies, or if I have to mad dash to complete an objective and i need to expend that ammunition you know a bit you know liberally i've got it you know instead yeah. of you know if i don't really need to use it i'll try not to use it so it makes those more important moments easier on me in the future i feel like i'm kind of yeah. making an investment in a way yeah um, i, I did that in far more uh expenditory with my ammo that's how i did it while i was playing silent hill because that's one of those survival uh horror thingies like much in the the likes of Resident Evil, where you don't have a lot of ammo normally if you just shoot everything. But it's until it's more, it's even more, oh, you probably want to avoid the enemies as much as you can and then fight them head on if you can and then use your ammo sparingly. And then the boss fights that came up, they I made them much easier because I had tons of shotgun ammo still around and tons of handgun ammo and didn't need to go in close to the boss fights. So yeah, as you said, it's an investment because you want these the big the big the big guns for the big enemies. Legit. Now I'm uh, I'm getting the end game. Uh, if you know what you're doing, I am about ten or fifteen minutes away from the final cutscene. Yeah, probably. Uh, uh yeah, you legitimately are. Um, and the biggest ex you know the biggest time thing is uh that that final enemy. Well, so. But... Yeah, this is where yeah. I think we're far enough along that I can start being a lot more critical of what I started to conclude. So, eventually... By the way, oh, wow. I was like, thank God I'm out of that area. <laughs> yeah, I was very bored of it at this point. Uh, so yeah, you, this this little train ride takes you to the next area, which I mean, it's like it's, it's cool and everything, but again, I can't help but be very cynical about anything that takes time in this game. I'm like, yes, adding on you. Train ride need to be this long. <laughs> But look at this, this is very deliberate, it's like visually yeah. it's very striking, and you already see people sharing this, and they're like, isn't this incredible? And it's like, cool. Yeah, it looks cool. It um, looks nice. Looks really looks cool. Neat. Real unique. Interesting. So you get here, and there's already plenty to search through. Uh, loads of different rooms and pathways, but like, most of it is dead ends. Nothing it's, to find. There is one pathway, yes. Yeah. In fact, it seems like there would that, be more, but there's one place to go. Knowing that in retrospect for this big sort of edible looking architecture is really lame. It's like there's, there's just one way yeah. you go. It's not yeah. like you enter a, a mansion or a palace and you're like, wow, I need to, you know, how am I going to explore this? Do I need to organize my travels? Do I need to yeah. go 
clear the left side first, then the right, or like, no, nah, there's only one place to go. Don't worry about it. You can't and get lost. Takes us to this room. Uh, we got down. So, the reality of this room, about this room, yeah, is that uh, you come across two bodies on little slabs, and one of them has a an attachment of a jar of what could be called jelly, and it's half filled. You're like, okay. Uh, you take that jar, you just pick it up, and you're like, alrighty then. And then you walk around, you find another place, a little machine, you put the jar in there, nothing else happens. Okay? And you walk further, and you uh, I think it even opens up a door, and it locks you into this sequence of this, this room. You got a shit ton of ammo here, you got a health boost as well. So you're like, okay, or exactly what's going on. And there are these two jars of thing here. And uh, the first thought... You might have, at least I had, and I think you did as well, Rags, possibly Mel, is that it... Oh, this will go in that machine that we were just looking at earlier. Yeah, of course. It of course. seems like it's an appropriately machine, sized object. Yeah, you, you put this thing here. I don't know why it's a baby, whatever. The slot looks like it mixes. Sure, let's do that. Yeah, those are little, little things. So, I do indeed try that at first. In fact, I think that this is uh, once I'd already figured it out, but... Uh, that doesn't work, and you have to go around for a while until uh, you, you'll you eventually just conclude, oh, there is a thing over there with, like, a belly. I'll put it in, and it starts going blah, 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 and you're just like, okay. Oh, my goodness. Yep. So I thought this was, like, some form of a generator, and we just put a battery into it, and it's just a weird flashy Same. one. Same. Yeah. And I was like, no, what that's powered what? up. What do I do next? Yeah, I want to look around the room now. What has changed now that I put the thing in the thing? Uh, I guess that one gate is a total red herring. You, you never open up that gate and go in. Yeah, I don't think you do. It's, it's never, it's never opened. Yeah, so you walk around, and it's like, hmm, nothing really changed. I think I picked that thing up once as well. It's like, what do I do with this now? I think that that gate does open because you need all three of the uh, the dudes, right? You fill up half the jar and then a full jar, which takes another two halves. Does it eventually open? Oh, the, oh, it opens when you blow up the thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. that's it. Gotcha. That's yeah, so, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a gamer, I was like, well, I have dealt with one of the jars. I've still got another one. And so people in chat were like, yeah, you got to put the other one in the machine. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I was like, okay, that's I can't. not it. Why can't I do that? Yeah, that can't be it then. And it's like, well, the door's locked. And so I very much don't like being in these situations, but it's not better than others, really, uh, in the sense of... I'm locked in here. Wandering there is one yeah. obvious thing I'm supposed to do, and I cannot find it. This is driving me nuts. Like, what am I supposed to do? I've got... The game has limited me to such a small environment with such little mechanics that I should be able to figure this out, right? Like, what am I doing yep. wrong? I frantically was searching every nook, every <laughs> cranny. I went out to the balcony. I looked around. I was... I, I was just meticulously studying every nook and divot and ridge of every wall and i looked around the floor and i and i and i just i was i was looking and looking and looking where is the button do i press an on yeah, switch I was, I was thinking there was a what have i missed what have i missed i've clearly missed something where is the button that i've missed and so uh yeah chat was suggesting all kinds of things to me like you've got to try moving this that place you got to Step on that, do this, that, the other. This, by the way, I thought was going to open that gate. And I was like, no, it, oh, it does this. Uh -huh. And I even tried shooting them with my normal guns at one point. I was so desperate to have something happen. Oh, the little rails at the top of the room? I thought yeah. they would be incorporated into this puzzle area scenario. Oh, yeah, I thought I might have I... to move the guy with the belly thing onto this. And I thought, yeah, I thought I was maybe thinking if I tried I, as well. I even thought maybe if I drop this little guy on this, then it'll open that permanently. But you can't yep. drop anything. Oh. You just like do we pick them up and slide them out through that door uh, that opens up when you stand on the pressure plate? I I guess not. So yeah, not doing good. Um, luckily for me, someone in chat suggests something so outlandish, and I'm like, that's hilarious. And then they they're suggesting it for real, and then I'm like, Are you serious? And it's like, well, I guess I can give it a shot. Because uh, I don't know what else I'm doing in here, and to be honest with you, I don't actually know where in the timeline I actually do it. Um, I'm still. Well, see, this is where my simple German brain came in. I was just looking around, it's like, oh, this thing is annoying. Crush stop baby. moving, and I and I just I just went this like, haha, stop moving, and then it explodes. His belly's like, 
Uh oh. Yeah, oh, it turns out <laughs> that what you are supposed to do here is you are supposed to take out the little baby embryo pod, stick it in the belly of this uh, cyborg, and then shoot it or punch it. You destroy yeah. it so yes. that the baby falls out, which is um, something that I only discovered. I think I pulled up your stream, Mar. <laughs> I was legitimately like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? I have searched for so long. I feel like half of my game time <laughs> has been spent wandering around the room trying to fit. Is it glitched? I restarted, by the way. I restarted the uh, the level, the checkpoint, because I, I thought that there might be a glitch, that uh, something was supposed to open when I put in the um, when I put in the baby. I was legit shocked by this. I was like, you're not serious. What the fuck? <laughs> Actually, yeah. how fucking bizarre and unintuitive is this? Why in the world? So, just, like, basic language, I would call it, for video games. This comes across as some kind of battery or power cell. And Absolutely. you place it into something that then powers up. Why would I then destroy it? Why the fuck did I need to put it into this thing to destroy it? Why couldn't I just break it as it is? Yeah, is because the way it's, to fill it's up already moved. It... it you go ahead. Oh, it's a, because it's already moving inside this thing. Yeah, so it's, it's not, not like, like you need to put it in to activate it or yeah. something. It's just like flooping around. But they want you to put this in there for reasons and then kill it. I was like, okay. I, and, you know, you are to expect some stuff like this. We're just like, whoa, I couldn't possibly understand what the hell this means. But seriously? <laughs> like... <laughs> And, uh, yeah, you just, it's its really confusing that it's just like, yeah, now you can shove this into that machine and crush him into jelly. Another thing they do here that just kind of throws me off is, like, the amount of jelly juice that comes out of this guy would surely fill several of these containers. Like, look at him, he's huge. It's compared like a to point, it, I mean. yeah. Like, look how much it fills up the machine, and then it drains, and it only fills up, what, half of one of these things. It's like, eh, okay. Definitely more than half of uh, one of these yeah. I know it's supposed to be an alien world with weird stuff and things are strange, but how am I supposed to piece together that the way that you get the jar of blood to open up the door is that you have to take a pod with a baby in it, <laughs> put the jar into a cyborg, and then either crush or engage in mortal combat with the cyborg so that you can then break the pod take the baby out, put the baby in the crusher, drain the baby blood, and then put that in the cylinder when you want to open a door. It's like, what? I, I'm i just like, I, I don't... No. If, uh, if, no. If, if, if everything wasn't highlighted with uh, interactable buttons, I have no idea how you'd figure it out. It doesn't make any sense. It's There's nothing intuitive about it. And so, we want to fill an X jar... And uh, that means putting the baby into the next cyborg, but he wakes up. And uh, then I prompt to just, like, you start avoiding what he does, which is grenade launch at you over and over again. And I think that what yeah. we'll do is just talk while it's playing. But his first phase is that he shoots, shoots, shoot. I think it's four cycles of three grenades is typically what it takes. Um, yep. It be variation. Until he starts reloading. And when he reloads, like, sacks of pink goo come out of his sides, and you just gotta hit them with the physical thing, or shoot with a gun, and it'll break, and then you, yep. he's... That's phase one complete. But as you can see, he struggles. He's oh, already yeah. got awful AI that has him constantly confused. To the point where you have to, like, handhold the enemy into attacking you, which is so embarrassing. Then, of course, it's kind just of really boring. I'm just waiting for him to expunge his fucking cycle before he is weak again. Oh, shit. Go. Oh, yeah. shit. And it's like, so what happens once that's done? Like, again, loads of really long animations. Every time these things actually tag you, it's just annoying. Yeah. A lot of waiting. Yeah, it's not a very engaging fight at all. Not fun at all, no. You're just walking around waiting for him to deplete his ammo, shoot the glowy bits, and that's it. Wait, did you need two shots? 
Yeah, so which in retrospect is absurd. So that means that that's the same damage as your poker. I used my plunger. Yes, yeah, I was about I, to say that. Because I used a poker and took poker. two. And you can do that in one go. You don't have to wait another cycle. Funnily so enough, using the physical one is actually faster. <laughs> another thing that I am unbeknownst to at this point is this is the last time you can use your ammo. That yep. is true. Now that you say it. Um, so look at me doing this. I'm like, ah, the blood was coming out of his head when I was hitting it there, but he's dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. And it's like, well, actually, mm -hmm. he's not dead. And so as a gamer, you're always looking for them weak spot things and stuff. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to need to stun him slash defeat him by, uh, you know, further damaging him. And uh, just pro tip, whenever you attack something and blood comes out, I feel like that's a signal to the player that... um. You're hurting them, especially if they make sounds of like ah when when you do it. And, and so I yeah, was just like, I spent a lot of time trying to f like running around, poking him in the head, shooting him, because it seemed like that was working. Well, but I guess it. I didn't know this is a thing too because end. people in chat were like, "You keep going for like thighs or shoulders or head or whatever." When uh, uh, the, the others would suggest others. So it's, let's say I hit it in the head. It's like I think you got to go for the thighs to make him fall over. They go for the thighs, and it's like, no, I think it's the flesh around the shoulders, it's like, it's, in, it's knock his arms off or whatever. And then most people are like, no, it's gotta be the head, it is the head. Blood comes out when you shoot him in the head. And eventually I think I used, like, all my ammo, and I'm just like, I don't oh. know what the fuck I'm supposed to do. Um, there's a, a strong reality here of what I am supposed to do. Uh, that just wasn't wait. clear to me. Yeah, you I didn't. just fucking wait. See, he's reloading. I was like, ah, oh, so it's got to be when he's reloading. But what is it? And then I was like, shoot him in the back, maybe? No. Like, nothing there. You could keep waiting. Still fucking then... with his gun. Yeah. And then... Wait, what? Wait, wasn't he supposed to open that thingy there? I... Wait, I'm confused. I was very confused at this point. I had no idea what I was doing wrong. Wait, I thought I remembered the cycle correctly, but I guess I didn't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's truly a cycle. Uh, because basically, was either I, he stood back up, he started shooting his thing. I started shooting my weapons at him for a while. It's like, okay, this is not working apparently. And then he started reloading. It's like, okay, something must have happened now. And I think for me, in the the first time he reloaded, he opened up his little flim flam. Look at this. In the front. You can stagger him. Oh, you can. And see, it's like so. I'm but supposed to do that? Then, question mark. No yeah, there's, there's nothing no to it. There's no reason to do that. It's... I was about oh, to say, God. I didn't do anything. do anything. Why would you make it this way? And this is the other thing, I started talking about this. I was like, when you find out how you actually beat him, why wouldn't you make it so that that's a secondary option? Just, you know, brute force. And it looks like there that it actually is. Looks like there it did. But I like, why yeah. have you seen how much ammo I've spent? I'm nearly out. It's a lot. There's no fucking way I can keep keep this up. Yeah, it seemed very inconsistent. I had, I like legit didn't know. Also, this gun is supposed to pack an enormous punch, and it's just yeah. not. Man, I get a feeling I got lucky Stag that he opened his. Stag it again. His, and yeah, you, you are starting to quickly. notice that, right? Like, there's a there's a key to this fight we haven't revealed yet, and I don't think I had any reason to think that that was the key to it when I was doing this. I think right now I'm like, this is it, is it not? And then I die, and I'm like, fucking hell, I have to do all of that again? Like, I have to whittle him down that far all over again? And I haven't even figured out how I'm supposed to kill him yet. Um, yeah, it's... Um, it's not the most intuitive, consider especially considering that he punches with his gun. Yes, you have to bait out the punch with the other arm. I didn't even know that. <laughs> It's when, he, <laughs> when, he, when he punches with his other arm, that's when he reveals his chest, and that's when you have to dodge the punch and then go in for a hit with the uh, the plunger. That is hilarious, because I thought the solution was just to wait, and then eventually he opens up his thing. Turns out, I guess I just accidentally baited out that attack and thought that's the thing I needed to... I just needed to wait. Because I got close when he did that. Oh, he actually... And when I found, See, by the way, when I found out this is how you kill him, you can you can do it really fast. And I was just like, "What a shit fucking boss!" Wow. But isn't that interesting? That that I thought that it's just waiting for him to deplete his ammo and then get to him and do it. I wasn't even aware it's it's the punch. 
I thought it's just waiting for him to deplete his ammo and then take advantage of that. Yeah. Because uh, I did get closer, but I didn't even notice he was doing a punch. I thought he just flumed around. Well, so what's funny about this is I said on stream there should have been multiple ways to beat him that included the one I tried. And someone in chat said, or I think even Super Chat, I don't think so. I think it's good that there's the one way. They just needed to make it clearer. What's funny is there are multiple ways to beat him. It just takes so much ammo that it's pretty unlikely that you would ever achieve it the other way. As you saw, I staggered him and then yeah. knocked him down. The amount of times that I would have hit him with ammo, I would have realized that my returns were not worth the ammo investment, and I would have just stopped. Which is funny. Like, well, I'm not supposed to do this. Because technically they would be. This is the last time you can spend ammo, but you don't know that at the time as a player. You don't know that, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to yeah, keep some um, ammo because you don't know what's up ahead. I'm not going to say it's the most because it's probably something else, but this is one of the most unintuitive pieces of shit I have come across <sighs> in terms of a sequence. All of this is so... Like, if I if I was in the developer's sort of, like, boardroom discussing this whole thing after we all play, I'd be like, we need to redo this. This is so it doesn't make sense and, and it's stupid. not fun, yeah. The, um, the fight itself is, is dull and boring and it wastes a lot of time. A lot of this just flat out doesn't seem to make any sense. It's not intuitive. Uh, that's ground up rework. To the point, yeah, where someone said, yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa it's, it's eager. It's, it's supposed to give a sense of, like, you don't understand. It's supposed to, and it's like, uh, you made this a video game, so you've got limits on that. You actually have to yes. have some things be yeah. understandable. You know, such as humans. press forward to move. I'm afraid you have that in the game. Pretty understandable, and that applies to a lot of stuff. Yeah, they lock you in to having the grenade launcher only now. Uh, and then you fight another one and you have to put it in his back to, to kill him after waiting for his cycle to complete. And that was a that was a big relief for me. Because I was just like, I don't want to fucking fight this thing twice. Yeah. Um, and so that completes his, I guess, addition to the game. He's the fifth enemy type, I think you, you uh, say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, more of a boss type that you fight technically once. There are three of these guys, one of them dies instantly, the other one dies pretty quickly, and then the other one's like a full-on fight. Awful, 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 and I never want to have to do it again. Though my patience yeah. was gone at this point, I kind of already hated this game. I'd had enough. Um, especially with people telling me I was near the end. I was just like, this game never Very gave me the end. anything worthwhile at this point. I didn't get engaged at all with, with anything. I was just like, these puzzles were pretty simple and very sparse. Yeah, then, you're minutes from the end, yeah. And the combat was just horrendous. Did um, you ever go back and finish? Yes, actually. But the fact that you've said that implies, of course, that this stream ends before I reach the end. And for those listening to this, mm. they're like, what? Why? You, you're so close. It's like, true. What? So, as you collect this, your left hand there gets covered in that weird stuff. And so you can no longer use it. Now, I think that's already strange. Because this is the thing, it's called ludonarrative dissonance, it happens in a lot of ways. But uh, just because your hand is covered in that goo, does not mean you can't actually still put that little vial into the thing. If you have two flippers, let's say, you could still probably do it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a little tougher, sure, but you can do it. But no, you're not allowed. And yeah. It's like, hmm, okay, that's already annoying, but fine. The implication, of course, being this stuff has been growing on you the whole game, so now it's time to get rid of it. Presumably. Um, now, if you go looking, you'll find... Because you only have the grenade launcher active now. It's, like, stuck to you. There are two different locations for standing on the little levers and opening up a thing. And then you can fire the grenade launcher into it. And it'll damage it and then open up a gate. That's, there's two areas that do that. Um, find the one that I start struggling with for that. Yeah, it's run about by here, but you also find a machine that can cut off this stuff. Now, the first thought I had was like, okay, I freed my hand, cool. Like, that was just something I had to do. Um, I didn't realize this machine was uh, only designed for that. I thought it was for something else and that it had a feature on it that would get rid of the thing uh, if it were on you. So I used it twice there without fully understanding what I was even supposed to do. But your health keeps going down once you've done that. And then, yeah, I just ran out and I was like, oh. Wait, you actually died, Jesus. Yeah, and I was just like, whoops. And, and people in chat were like, why did you use it twice? And I was like, because I didn't realize the machine... We've never come across a machine in the whole game that specific design is to cut off a thing on your hand. So I thought that machine was designed to do something else and that it had a feature applied to it that if ever your hand is covered in stupid goo, it'll cut it off. So I was just like, okay, fine. I, I've learned now. 
But, um... I was still kind of like, oh, I've been sent all the way back. That's, uh... Oh, fuck, okay. That's really great. Um, mm. And as you can imagine, it's trying my patience, but that's fine. We, we get through it. We, we do this. We persevere, because we're humans, okay? So I do that, and unfortunately okay. for me, I'm not soft-locked. I am harsh-locked, or whatever you want to say. I only get yeah. one or two tries of this before I get reset again. Because I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, but I've freed my hand, and I'm like, alright, so I can go and do that jaw thing now, right? I needed a free hand to do the jaw thing, and it's really close. So I head there, and it reseals. Game's like, nope. And I'm like, oh, and so do you know what this did? Rags, metal, do you know what this did? It poisoned my gamer mind, because this game isn't uh -oh. very well designed. I thought, so I get a couple of seconds of freedom? Yep. That's weird. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be able to do with that couple of seconds. Um, I find the, the health thing is available in that other area. We've got two doors with lights on them. Um, and another machine here that can... Uh, so this, by the way, this is where I came so close to actually being able to just move through. If I only use my four light machine here, but... Uh, I was still very lost and confused as to how everything worked. And I even thought, by the way, that I needed my hand free to use the health machine. But I was like, okay, so I freed myself. Now I'll just have to make my way to whatever's required. There's another door uh, across the room there. You would have seen it uh, for a split second. I wonder if I've got footage here of me trying to access. I know I do, but I just don't know. Mm -hmm. I think... Yeah, because I can see it over there. You can't use it because your hand is covered in goo. So I'm like, if I use the machine first... Then go and try and use it, it'll work, but it, it also cuts me off. And then I use the one that's closer to it, and see here? Cuts you off. And that is before the timer re releases. So I was getting really fucking pissed now, because I was like... These are both directions I should be able to go, but you're not letting me. Yeah. Very arbitrarily. Uh, that's five <clears throat> lights, so I needed five lights to access it. And then uh, chat were like, not both of them are five lights, one of them is four lights. And to be fair, I w wasn't at all focusing on the four light one. I was getting incredibly frustrated. To the point where I was just going to kill myself, obviously. <laughs> um, As you do. I finally you die access... before your health is drained, by the way. I die before my health? Oh, right. As in the game animations don't catch up to you sort of thing? I don't th yeah, I, th I think it's... Yeah. Um, I think I get it this time... Not even 100% sure. Um, but basically, what I'm trying to describe to you here is that the information I've been given is so fucking goofy compared to what I'm actually supposed to do that it confused the hell out of me. Um, but there you go. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not allowed to do any of the other options, and I fucking died you anyway. Die. Yeah. And this is the thing. I was, I was locked into having very low health because of checkpoints and other things that had happened. Anyway, get myself a bit of health going forward. Do this all again. It's all working out great. Get to this door. This time I'll survive it. Awesome. Wonderful. And so this area, uh, I'm so tilted at this point that like it doesn't even matter what mechanics are being presented. I just don't want. I want out. As you can, and this is, by the way, almost the end of my playthrough, which is not the end of the game. So you must wonder what's happening. Yeah, here. you're. You are minutes from the end. Yeah. So that's an ammo store there. There's a lever here. All you're supposed to do is wait until there's an opportunity to fire a grenade launcher and you'll break a thing and you can move on. I, yeah, um, I'm so... Pad, it moves the things. I'm so pissed off. I'm just firing. I'm, I'm, I'm just blasting. I just don't care anymore. So I'm just like, whatever. And, uh... Dude, I think... Yeah, because I've only got three shots. I just... Oh, that's the fuck up. And it even hit me. Whatever. Whatever. Fuck's sake. Yeah, I guess I'll restock, because that's where I was obviously supposed to shoot it. And I'm just like, alright. And then I go to do it. Uh, animation's not starting up. And now I can't move. And yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Oh, you can't move anymore. Nope. Yeah, he's glitched. Oh. That's not that's a... good. Now, while you watch <laughs> me fumble with this, the other thing I wanted to highlight that I kind of went past on accident was... um. I got so pissed off when I realized that I could still use the health machine. And chat were like, calm down. It's different, remember? You've got your uh, your flume arms and your normal arms. Your flume arms are able to, uh, to get access to the health machine. So it makes sense. And then I got even angrier. 
why the fuck do I have control over my flu moms enough to be able to do things and interact with whatever I want? Actually, I'm going to roll this back because this is another problem. We will get there. <laughs> um, why can I do things with my flu moms, but I can't put the jar in the machine? Why can't my flu mom put the jar in the machine? Should be able to do that. Yep. And if, bear in mind, if I could do that, it, that's the end of the game. That platform yeah, raises. Yeah, your flu farm has it. been the thing that's been whole. It's essentially your inventory storage. Whenever yeah. you check your inventory, your flu farms <clears throat> raise up to you so that you can see what you have in your inventory. Not that you ever, never need to do that, but that is something in the game. So, so on command, you can make those yeah, arms do you things. You definitely have yep. control over those arms. You do. Um, but no. And so that was driving me nuts. I was just like, why the fuck? Uh, when I can solve this problem easily, intuitively, the game's betraying me and itself in order to make us have more time doing tedious shit. I was, I was very upset. And, uh, yeah, and then, of course, like I said, I'm running out of patience. I'm literally at my wit's end, and then the, I fucking freeze as, as though God is like, hey, hey. <laughs> just throw this on, too. <laughs> now, this well, is a... Pardon me for just a moment. I need to use, use the loo real quick. I'll be right back. Okay. This isn't a problem in loads of video games because they know this is a potential. This can happen. Soft locking as well as just falling into a part of the map that is inescapable. You, you shouldn't be there, blah, blah, blah. Some games come with the chance for you to kill yourself. No matter what, you'll have like a mechanic that can do so. Some games come with, um, and I referenced this in the stream, I was playing God of War. Even God of War 1, as early as that, you press start and you've got load previous checkpoint. Low pre yeah, exactly. Uh, so, and that'll take you to something that is more recent, likely than your last save. Saving and checkpoints are different things. And luckily, for us, uh, this game has a saving system, of course. It's, okay, excellent. And so, as you've been seeing, when I die, I get sent back a certain amount of time, which I think is actually already a problem in this game. Um, there's been times where I get sent back way too fucking far, as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's hard to say exactly where the line should be with video games, but this one totally went too far. Um, now, what happens here is that I'm like, I best load my last checkpoint. There's no option for that. There is only load game. Yeah. And load game refers to autosaves, and they happen at the beginning of each act. And there are five acts in this yeah. four to five hour game. Which means I'm losing as much as an hour of gameplay. And um, I quickly realized that when I didn't mean, by the way, to hit load. I was kind of hoping to do something else. Um, but ultimately it didn't really matter because I was, I was screwed. There was no way out of this. Um, maybe if I went to the main menu, it might have done something else when I hit continue. That might have been a way to escape. But that's still maybe. just a piss poor sort of... Uh, play a intuitive way of, of getting me to what I need, which should be yeah, load last the... checkpoint. That's all you need. Exactly. Yeah, just have that in your it's just, in your it, menu. Yeah, it's a so... form of like kill me and send me to where I was last. But yeah. Um. So I, I alt tab because I'm sorting something. Uh. I think like chat goes off or whatever. And then uh, when I click uh -huh. back in, it uh it counts as clicking the save file being act five. Which you can see, oh. it says it says playtime three two three, meaning three hours and twenty three minutes, and we are four hours and forty three minutes into the stream. So well, that's how you, much time. There's a timer, a game, an in game timer in the top right that said four hours twenty six. So you virtually lost an hour. Yeah, uh, and it was an accident, and they didn't ask, "Are you sure?" One of the most basic fucking things you could ever have in a video game. Mm -hmm. When and the reason they have, "Are you sure?" It's because this is a bit of a big thing you're doing here. Are you sure you want to do this? You want to load up a thing that takes you back and out, but nope. It just goes, yeah, okay. And I was like, oh no. No, 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 no. No, no, you didn't just do this to me. And uh, yeah, we are right at the beginning of Act 5. Man. Uh, it was not pleasing to me. Not at all, not in the least. I do remember that. <laughs> uh, and so I was I was done though. Now funnily enough, I have since completed it. I got all the achievements as well, so we can continue talking about it. I already know what happens, but um yeah, this oh, was Oh boy. Do you know what happens? I do. I totally understand I it completely. It was okay. easy. To... Okay, I... That's good. That's um, good. Mirfly did see what happens because he he quickly raided my stream. I was like, <laughs> oh. "Hey, enjoying this?" <laughs> 
<laughs> what we'll do here is load up a, a long play, as they're called, of someone else playing this game. We'll just uh, be someone who isn't me complete it while I uh, we, while we can talk over it. So, yeah, the, that happened to me. It was an incredibly rough experience. At that point, I was critical of not only the save system in several directions, but the combat system, the lack of puzzles, the simplicity of the puzzles, the lack of like depth to anything in the in the world design beyond the visual splendor of Giga's artwork along with uh, the other artists it references, I was so done uh, to the point where I was like, I think it's pretty weak to call this a video game uh, compared to some of the things we can get in this in this world and some things people are capable of, but at the same time, yeah, I'd rather just say, okay, it's just a shitty game. Um, which is not something I ever wanted to actually get to the point of saying, but um, I suppose we'll finish it out before Thing, anything like that, you you unlock this room, which is the remove the weird thing on your back room. Yeah. That's uh. uh. Before you can activate it, the uh, the creature decides it's gonna rip out your guts essentially, mm -hmm. as though it knows what you're about to do. I guess. I don't know, but either way, you, you <laughs> what can you do but go oh. Oh, that's gross. And, and yeah, yeah. And, and so, but you get off the machine, you pull it off, and then you can uh, complete your goal, which is get that jaw to the thing, and then that raises the platform. Oh fuck, I forgot about this. Sorry guys, it's not as simple because they lock off the shortcut for no yeah, reason at all. It's move just locked all the way. You have to walk all gonna, the way around. I'm gonna play this part in two times. They so, make you walk very you are, slowly. You are currently limping um, because you got your guts are torn out. And not only, like I said, this is on times two. They add this little thing of like, oh boy, oh geez. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. oh man, I okay, hope now. you make it, whoever you are. Yeah, I hope I'll do the thing I'm, I'm this is, doing right now. This is so unacceptable. This adds like 10 minutes onto the fucking game. <laughs> it's like so long. And you have to draw in the environment, because otherwise you just kill yourself through boredom. <laughs> You're just like, oh, yeah. look at this architecture. I'm still... That limping. looks cool. All right, that bought me a few seconds. Look at this. And they keep adding these little falling over animations. Like, why did you spend so much time on additional animations instead of, you know, the mechanics? Content? Also that. Yeah, I guess it was uh, different people, I suppose, or whatever. Yeah, uh, probably. You know, you're probably right about that. Actually, the the teams aren't anything to do with each other. But yeah, you yeah. finally get back here. They delayed you for no reason at all. Yep, you plug in the thing. God, I want to get through this so quickly at this point. You you activate platform. You put yourself in this machine. By the way, you have to do this, Mel. Uh, you know the option you were trying to do. It doesn't let you do it if you do it that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it out. So yeah, he he's cutting the fuck out of you. You end up getting oh, you okay, put into death, the but... hive mind or something. Wake up as these two. You can switch between them. You apply. Yeah, the two little bodies from before that you yeah. had to put the juice into, the blood into. Mm -hmm. They get up and start walking around. You can mind control them. And then you have one of them keep the door open-ish. And then you grab your past body and use the weight of you and him to get through the door by opening, sitting on this little platformy thing. Oh, yeah. this guy didn't do it quite right at first. Regardless, you eventually open it, you walk through, plays a cutscene until you become a flesh ball. Yeah. Because that little yeah. creature jumps on you the as well. You... Yeah, well, it's the one that you remove from you, it actually comes back and stops you at the end, so... Yeah, it just gets you again, because fuck you. I don't know what this means. Yeah. And I was struggling to be able to care. I didn't care. I That's, was just, I just yeah. felt like it was incredibly anticlimactic. And I was just like, I don't even know what this means. I don't know what is happening. I, I guess this is yeah. what happened to this guy. I'm not even thinking that this is me at this point. Uh, and that's what's, that. That is scorn. That's the game. What's it? What's that's that big? Game. What's that big? Flash, fleshy vagina in the background that I'm trying to get to. What is, yeah, that I, weird what gate. Is... Does it go someplace? Your character's clearly trying to get there. I guess your character knows something that you don't know. Oh, clearly. Uh, so... Yeah. Yeah. Dawn. That's 
the um that's the game um <laughs> yeah i mean uh, I, I don't even know what to say it's just this happens at the end and i guess you fail at your task and look how cruel this world is i would go as far as saying this is yes. the, it, it's another one of those ones that just test the limits of how bad or thin a game can be um there's a lot of understanding of content that should be in a game and this just doesn't have it, it and it doesn't care if you want it or not it's, it's done so um i know that this has been in production for is it six years six years something yeah. like that yeah. that seems unacceptable to me I, I i just don't understand how you could have be released fair, this after that's all like that time that's that's a good 40 minutes of game per year of development i don't know why there's so many it's, it goes beyond uh whether or not they had time to make more resources they didn't even repeat more resources they had in in more interesting ways you had a chance to do that the only like we've talked about there's some puzzles that they just do once and then leave but there's very few puzzles in the game most of it is just walking around pressing buttons until things work pretty um, much i suppose the atmosphere is worth praising as well as the visuals but i don't know how much that's sure. going to go for you know helping a game to a defensible position as uh engageable mechanics are just not present we've talked about this before but there are some games that have limited mechanics or thin mechanics um Homer is going to be one of the better examples that was a complaint that happened when people were playing it when they came out they were like there's this mainly walking pressing buttons accessing terminals a bit of puzzle solving but there's barely anything to it like yes but the, the mechanics never got in the way and they all engaged in a, uh, a way that they were quote unquote supposed to it would never... Yeah, pretty diegetic. It, it didn't feel very gamey, which is not that it's bad to feel gamey, but if you want to go for particular vibes, then going for something that feels like a game might be not the route to go. And so um, I give, I've got bad marks for most things except like a couple, and I just don't think the game gets to fly by on being like, I'm an atmosphere game. Yeah, no. Um. I don't know what that means. Does that mean a game that manages to nail an atmosphere and its mechanics and its story becomes like a godlike game? Could be. I guess so. But, yeah. Who knows? I think we managed to cover it's... mostly everything about it as we've gone through, luckily. But um... Yeah, pretty much. It's just like this. You go in, it's like, oh, that's kind of neat. Look how gross and disgusting this looks. And even yeah. like sometimes when things happen, it's like, oh, that's nasty. Look at this fleshy thing you need to put your hand in. And then it happens again, it's like, okay, it's still gross, and then it happens again, it's like, okay, I'm... Well, that determines your mileage. That right there, what you're yeah. describing, that your ability to to think that the environment is cool and interesting, that it, that's it. That will determine how much, or probably what you think of the game. Yeah, uh, I mean, Because that's you... going to be the thing that carries you through. I mean, if you go in and just want to look at the environments, I mean, God, you have nice things to look at or gross things whatever you want to call them but at some point i just want to see something with the gameplay happening where i, I mean if you if you implement a shooting thing in your game you might as well make it work properly and make it work nicely and make it responsive and not do well this where you just fucked if you don't hit an enemy once and then if you try to run away to correct your error you just get hit in the back because these guys have all ranged attacks except the 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 horse thingy uh yeah as you as, as you said it's like the enemies and you are out of sync so yeah it's just uh that game this game just flipped on me very disappointed it was very I, anticlimactic yeah felt very disappointed at the end that was i was like oh this is the end it's done. That's it. That's all that the game has to offer. And it does. I mean, repeated playthroughs, you're not going to... It's not like there are secret passageways and extra puzzles and multiple endings. No. Like, that's it. The difference as as... between a completionist playthrough and a normal playthrough is indistinguishable. Yeah, as far as I know, if you save the guy in the beginning, he helps you open the door, the big door, and that's it. That's the only difference of the playthrough, as far as I know. I'll take your word for it. I don't care enough to check. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That is what happens. I did because I did it myself. I was curious. He, um, he crawls out of the thing and then you force his hand into the machine to get the little spike on it. 
Then you force him to access the console to open the door to let you through, which, by the way, if that is truly considered more moral, it looks like he's trapped when you leave him. Right. Curious. Um, yeah, so replay replayability in this game is basically zero. Zero, yeah. Like, there's no point. You can just go in the beginning area, it's do this worse. one thing, can look at it, and that's it. I say it's worse than zero because I would start to consider it torture to have to be playing this game again. <laughs> that's fair, yeah. Uh, meanwhile... You'll be in pure finish the game mode because there's nothing yeah. else to... I get, there's no secrets, there's no multiple endings. The only thing that seems to be an option is scoop and saw. That seems to be the only yeah. thing. Uh, and uh, that's yeah, so no, unintuitive no. that it doesn't feel good to do. Two very great criticisms I have, and when I say great, I mean large, significant ones. Uh, one, this game is clearly not finished in several ways. Uh, I, I can almost, because I'm getting real cynical about it, assume that there was intentions to make some kind of binding story, and then they just sort of threw that out because they didn't have enough time, they didn't even start it. There's a chance that that was the case. I don't know, I'm just speculating. Because um, it just seems to be that there's room to build it, be in the form of um, notes or consoles giving you information and terminals or different kinds of uh, visions and flashes of, of events that took place. This is this is all a technological place. Like There's loads of uh, perfectly diegetic ways to get that to the, the, the player, but sure, um, that's just not in it. So th there's that aspect that's gone. The The combat mechanics are incredibly thin. Like they They feel archaic. They're from a very old time where this was starting to even be discovered by a developer like third person shooter combat then there's um the puzzles there's so few of them spread across this very small game i don't even know how that's possible but it feels like we barely get any puzzles in a game this small um it's a shame it really is especially considering as i said i think they were like the highlight of my uh, gameplay was like oh thank god a puzzle to solve yeah and this way yeah, i've been walking yeah. around and pressing the occasional button not only do i think there's not enough of them and i don't think that they're because some of them are way too simple, but some of them, like, they just, like, as we said, they, they would only use the one time when you could easily have made developing ones that get harder, which they have done with some of them. Yeah, some of them are developing. And then there are environments where you're just, like, the last place, it's like, wow, this is so grand, and it's like, yeah, but there's only the bit to the left that you do anything in in this place, and then, like, the underneath. And it's like, does that not again? All these things make it feel like it's unfinished. Like, there's more things they were going to do, but they've just been cut off, and they've released it, and mm -hmm. they're just hoping that this is enough. Um, and then the other thing I would say is that, I'm sorry, but the developers of Scorn, I don't know how familiar they are with video games, but I would guess they're not very. They're familiar with artwork, and atmosphere, but yeah. either they had no time, or the people who were they had time bound to be making this game, game, part of the game, have not played many games. In fact, yeah, it feels it, like they may have watched some like, videos about games. Feels like the um, they wanted to make art in terms of aesthetic and a really cool environment, and they were very passionate about this aesthetic. And then they realized along the way, oh shit, I have to, I have to make a game. I have to program a video game. That's a job. That's work. Um, yep. so yeah, uh, I think it's bad, I'll never play it again, nor would I recommend it. No. Not no. a recommendation from me, no. Not even I mean, on Game not... Pass, don't touch it. Yeah, on Game Pass, which, thank god I played it on Game Pass and didn't yeah. blow 40 bucks, but, uh, yeah, even on Game Pass, and even as short as it is, I mean, this, uh, we've got, um, you know, Shirako doing a, uh, full game walkthrough. It is two hours and 40 minutes. So yeah, just yeah. so people know, this is kind of we found this out when I was like planning to have footage of the background. This is a this is something called a long play. Where for those who don't know, it's just something you can find for every video game where you don't have any commentary. It's really good if you want to absorb the story or understand a game without anyone going, "Hey guys, welcome to part <laughs> six of my play." It's just like, shut the fuck. what's up, boys? Um, what's up? It's a boy. They are not speed here. runs. They are playthroughs. They are just people playing through the game at a reasonable pace. Sometimes I even wonder how they do them in terms of if you get stuck, do they just like, you know, phase it so that it cuts to when they actually figure it out or something. Mm. But um, as you've been seeing from this footage, he seems to be just playing it. Uh, this is times two speed, so he's just going through normally. In fact, he's like, the one thing he's doing here that wasn't present in my playthrough that you would have seen is the, the uh, he's definitely kind of rushing past enemies when it doesn't work out when he's killing them or he's sort of 
brushing past places he could further explore, which I did a lot of, and like I said, I mm -hmm. feel punished. Either I found... The one time I found anything, I was given two enemies that fucking sponged all the shit I picked up anyway. Um, and that was, like, like I said, one time. Uh, the rest of it, I was just dead end, 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 until I got to a point. Look at that. Fucking yeah. hell, that is annoying. Poor guy. I had to go through it, too. Um, point being, he's playing like a normal person, and it took him two hours and 40 minutes. Yeah. Game so length is complicated, especially $40. because content per minute as well, not just amount of time, but yeah, $40 for that, that's, uh, you might, you might think, Pretty wow, bad. maybe it's the that's... greatest thing ever for two, two hours and 40 minutes, right? And it's like, you've seen what you've seen. Mm -hmm. Let's put it into perspective, this is worse than a movie. Yeah. Movies have stories. <laughs> <laughs> movies yeah. have stories and characters, and they also have aesthetics. And movies and do not have annoying gameplay that I want to skip. So yeah, um, a harsh not recommend. Uh, is it better or worse than Amnesia Rebirth? Metal rags. What do you think? Oh man, better because it's shorter. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably what I would have said as and well. What if we discount length? However, however, uh, if you were to make this game and uh, make a, a ten hour version of it, Jesus Christ, man. Uh... So, um, Amnesia Rebirth's story was strange and annoying and oftentimes and contradictory. And yeah, and it added to a story that I actually quite like, so it was annoying me there as well. But it was a story. Yeah. There were some things I liked about Rebirth. They were small, but there were some things. I think I would agree with you. Yeah, I think we, we went over that in our coverage that there were definitely parts of the game that were working for mm -hmm. us. I mean, you didn't get punished for exploring, for example. That's, yeah, you that's got rewarded. Plus. That is true. Yeah. You actually get um, to keep things. You got matches. one of your ten matches, yeah. <laughs> you can yeah. only, only carry ten, remember. Yeah. Oh, God, However, so this game does not... Scorn does not have any uh, fear flashes. That's it true. Doesn't. That is true. Fear flashes were actually so... annoying as fuck. But I think Ooh, the reality should already have set tough. in. The fact that we have to think about it. Yeah. I think I would go with Scorn. Scorn. If you were forced but to play one I'm again, not... which would it be? My answer, by the way, would be Scorn because it's shorter, but I don't know yeah. if we ignore that portion of it. Yeah, let's say yeah. you have to either complete Scorn or you have to play three hours of Amnesia Rebirth. What do you choose? Probably Amnesia Rebirth. Did you say four hours of Scorn or four hours of Rebirth? Sure, let's just say that, yeah. Hmm. Legitimately tough. So, one reason I'd probably go for Rebirth is the fact that I haven't played it in so long. It's going to be far more interesting to me. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it is something I don't like. But the other aspect as well is that Rebirth does have the full set of dimensions. It is trying to tell you a story. There are environmental pieces you can pick up to tell you more things. There are puzzles to solve. There are monsters to run away from. Yeah. There's a whole set of worlds that change the visuals as you go through. Surely Rebirth is the better game overall. I think yeah. overall, yeah. I think Rebirth is the better game. However, this game excels in its aesthetic. The problem is that's virtually everything it is. It doesn't have enough puzzles to tide me over. Well, there you have it. Uh, what else I wanted to chat about was what this game's perception was. Now, on release, you had me, Metal, Rag, several others in the world, I'm sure, who yeah, felt a particular way. Several of those people did Steam reviews for Souls, and the game immediately got mixed on Steam, which is not yeah, good. Yeah, it, it looks like it's, it got a, I think the lowest was 67% positive, and I think it's, it has just barely creeped over the positive line. It's at like 71 or so percent? I think so, yeah. So, so what happened was... It um, is, Creeped 72. over that 70% mark. Oh, okay. It was yeah. still too high. But. It was that perception, and I started reading the reviews, and it was a lot of the stuff we've been highlighting. And then I checked the subreddit, and there was just war outright <laughs> with, with the defense of the game versus attacking the game. And then uh, we had a change of heart, it seems. It is now uh, mostly positive on Steam. Something clearly changed. So how about Maybe. we read some of the Steam reviews? See what the perception is now. Um, I got most helpful reviews in the past day. That's what I'm supported by. 
Yeah, have that yeah. here as well. Uh, please look at the reviews despite the spoiler warning. There is no major narrative. There is no major mm -hmm. combat focus. There is no major puzzle element. Scorn is an experience on its own. Is phenomenal. It's gritty visuals and depressing aesthetics set a tone and mood that refuses to leave once it makes itself known. This atmosphere is carried throughout the game and its mechanics featuring a desolate world that's foreboding and creates a sense of dread and unease at what may be around every corner. But that's not what Scorn actually is. It's more like an oh, overpriced oh. proof of concept since it's... Uh, sure, it's good, but at the end, I'm left wanting more, more of anything, really. At no point is it ever bad, minus some weird balancing, but for $40, it's not worth it. At best, I suggest waiting for a heavy discount or some schmuck to gift it to you. Some schmuck. Some schmuck. Oh. What's funny about that is it's not recommended, but um, I think they were way too praiseworthy of it. Yeah. I think so, so too, yeah. Not bad. It's like, yeah, it's, it is, though. Um, a bit too generous, I would say, but... Uh, Still kind of a, you know, I agree with the idea that it's like, yeah, it's uh, not much of a... Oh, no. It's almost like one and a half acts of a game. But, uh, yeah, don't worry, we're getting yeah. there. We're getting there. Uh, next one just says, bought for $40 and all I got was Ohio Simulator. Oh, I, I, I saw the first sentence of the next one and I'm already triggered. So then we get to the recommended from Kenny. And it says, TLDR. Kenny. If if you liked the experience of Soma, then you'll find a lot to love here. If you're looking for Light a horrific up. action shooter, then you'll need to look elsewhere. Boo. Uh, Do not. How dare you stand where he stood. Exactly. <laughs> Soma's incredible. This. Soma's incredible. No, Soma, Soma, this isn't. Um, first, the elephant in the room. The first trailer on the store page makes the game come across as an action FPS. It isn't. It's a linear exploration game with puzzles thrown in. Some of the puzzles are pretty linear basic. Linear exploration game. Which is interesting with how much shooting... They can be in it, but all right. Yeah. Make sure all the things line up, but rotating one rotates two others. But the puzzles that involve walking through the environment and using all of this ancient alien technology are all fantastic. Why? Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I would. It's one of those uh, kinds of things where you, you just want to ask, like, oh, really? What makes you say that? Storm was a fantastic experience. The game feels like going through a Cyclopean Geiger esque world uh, through less overtly sexualized than Giga's own art. I don't know about that. There's plenty of sexual shit in this as well, which it, again is There's people fucking on the walls yeah, in that last it's, area. <laughs> it's fine with me. It's in Giga's stuff. It's like yeah, okay. The yeah, sounds, yeah. especially both for basic interactions and other living entities, are very well done. The story is left vague. The story is left vague. You got that right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But the overarching theme appears to me that at its core it's about the cycle of death and rebirth. In a broader sense, I could see someone claiming a theme about societal familial norms and expectations too. Oh, okay, if you, if you say so. Sure. Uh, where did you pull that from? All right, my dude. Sure. Um, I noticed that my time spent on the game is roughly double of the average review on here. I stopped to take a lot of screenshots of the environment, so I would guess if I hadn't done that, it would probably be finished in roughly six hours. Wow. Yeah, nope. Six hours of screenshots? What's wrong with no. you? <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend this game to people who enjoy slower paced games with puzzles and very unique environments, but I would also recommend waiting for a sale. $40 seems a bit too high for the length of this game for most people, but don't uh, personally regret buying it or that price. The experience itself was worth the purchase. Okay. Good for you. I like that three people found this review funny. Yeah. <laughs> game looks cool, but it's way too short. Got all four achievements in four hours. Pathetic. See, that's not how... Whether or not I got all the achievements isn't. <laughs> I waited years for yeah, this game. Yeah, doesn't mean anything. And they gave me four hours of cool scenery and simple puzzles. Shake my head. Uh, so. Yeah, there's way more positive than there is negative now. This was filled with negatives at first. Yeah. But there is a sentiment about the nature of a lot of reviews, and you know, I'll. I think it's more likely for me to find them. Go on subreddit. Okay. <laughs> There's one thing that just says, this review will not spoil any of the story, but will give you some info on the game fields. Like, yeah, it's not easy not to spoil the story. How do you spoil Great. a story? How do yeah. you? <laughs> I don't, yeah, what is like, well, there's a pile of bodies in one place, and then there's yeah. a door in another place, and then there's a scoop and a saw at the other. I don't, I couldn't begin. There, There's very, very little in terms of a story. Um, here, One thing that I noticed was when you originally get the key on your arm, your arm bleeds. Whenever you um, take over the body of the new person, I think they get a key as well, but it doesn't bleed. Oh. Uh, so I suppose like these things were meant for them and not for you, but you're close enough. 
but that's all i'm already starting to try and stretch it i'm desperately trying to put pieces together oh so yeah. um there's plenty of people who have tried to give interpretations of what the story even is uh, it involves just like commentary on how you're um you're like uh, a pod person that was created as a lower class while the higher class transcends to a higher form of being and you were uh, like a the personified will of the lower class trying to reach them and transcend as well and that's what happens at the end of the game or something i remember reading it all and being like i have no fucking clue how you gathered any of this shit <laughs> yeah it feels like um, that, that that's conclusions you can make if you're familiar with geiger's work i guess which i am not at all <laughs> Scorn reminds me of Karl Marx. Oh no. <laughs> um Like I have no fucking clue that there's like higher class, lower class in this war. I don't fucking know. Especially because the middle area is the one that's all fucked up. Yeah. Not even the lowest area. Which seems like an odd to I don't know. I, I'm not gonna sit here and try and speculate too much, you know. I'm trying to find the threads I had read regarding defenses and all different things of this game, but now I'm able to find them. I'm curious if they've been deleted. They were a little bit uh, angry. Ah, here it is. Okay, so. Ooh. This post is called, PSA, your inability to solve basic puzzles is not a game design flaw. Wrinkle your brain a little bit. This game isn't a first-person action game. It was never implied to be one. I hear about people walking around in the first room going in circles, not realizing the giant door is their objective. Well, the two sets of controls are designed to be used by two sets of hands. Just come on, use your noggin. It's a slow game. Give yourself some time to think. Um, so that wasn't our complaint. We managed to no. understand all that. Huh. I'd say the puzzles were the highlight. Um, yeah? If I, yeah, I would say so as well. That's that's the best thing the game had to offer. Um, I, I mean, I guess discounting atmosphere. Visuals. A couple, yeah, I guess atmosphere and a couple puzzles, yeah. So um, you got loads of comments saying thank you and true and like yeah people just don't understand it true true please they just don't get um, snyder's vision they just don't get scorn's <laughs> vision um yeah someone else said did anyone else get the ending or the the thing where you kill the creature and get his hand i wanted to do that but my again, my friend said he managed to do it um the, and the creature was uh, alive and willing but basically just commenting like oh i guess there's two things you can do um at the very beginning Someone else said, I found out you could not save the guy after playing the game and checking what was uncompleted achievement that I had. If you save him, you have to lure him into the machines. It's like, yeah, again, that, that is true. And it doesn't seem like you're saving him. Lure, I mean, just the way he phrases it, lure him. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then someone else says, you have to force him to get into one of the key implants and then force his hand into the other mechanism where he'll be trapped forever. Killing him is the kinder option. Well, you, you technically you kill him both ways, but one of them is much more excruciating. So, you know, I, I uh, and so these are these. By the way, these are fans of the games talking about it. Like, hmm, nice. The first few puzzles aren't bad at all per se, but pretty obtuse. You have to notice really small details sometimes, and it can be a problem in a game where every wall, floor, ceiling, and object cre uh, creates visual interest. Movement feels kind of slow at certain times. The egg puzzle kind of rubbed me the wrong way because the egg you're supposed to use is only distinguished from the others by two tiny white dots that are slightly brighter than the rest of the eggs. I don't actually agree with that. I thought it was quite distinct. I don't agree with that. I no, thought it was, was yeah, they were very clear. distinctive. Yeah, I knew which ones they were at first. And I think the first time when you activate it, it purposefully fucks up so that you know which one to go for anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had no problems whatsoever knowing which one. I, I, think I the only point where really I, I think it's the Dylan. only point where I was confused for a second. It's like, wait, why does it fall down? I was like, oh, there's another one. Okay, fine. <laughs> they follow up with saying, also getting the egg in place reminded me of playing a phone game and was pretty boring and uncreative in a game with lots of potential for some super out of the box stuff. Certainly not perfect, but I'm enjoying it so far. What's funny is I was fine with that puzzle. It is probably one of the yeah. very few highlights in my memory. I was like, that was something to solve. Oh well. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, you got this. People are already defending poor game design by labeling it a puzzle. And then someone else said, you can say you feel the puzzles are poorly designed, but it's quite literally a puzzle game. It's also quite literally a first-person shooter. Yes. Mm. Trying to find... There's, there was a negative paragraph in here, but it has been buried. Not somewhere. No. 
I think it should have gone full in either. I I would rather it go full in one direction or the other. Be a full puzzle game or a full shooter game. Don't give me this half-ass shooter yeah. element mixed into every the you know the occasional puzzle. Just make it with like fleeing mechanics and stuff. Just don't fleeing have any shooting mechanics. going on. Oh, I thought you said fleam mechanics, and I was like, oh, no. but, but yeah, yeah I, I, you're fleam right. Fleam mechanics be, would be cool too. Yeah. <laughs> if it was just running away from enemies, it would be better. Yeah, yeah. Where you had to hide and run. As you scroll down and discover more criticism, um, mm. nobody well, expected guess. this to be a full-on action game. It was never advertised as a puzzle game. Um, it has literally. Wait a minute. It was never advertised it had as a puzzle puzzles game. Puzzles in it. I mean, it had puzzles in the trailers, right? It has some someone, puzzles. Ask me what this was advertised as. Like I said, as far as I knew, there was going to be shooting in it and there was going to be puzzle solving in it. But Mahler, I was still... You don't have to guess. Uh, I'll go to the Steam page. No, and... no. I, the reason well, the reason I say this is because my perception was it could be a equal in all parts of anything. Like, I went in... I'm getting tired of people being like, you're only upset because of your expectations. And I was like, no, this could have been anything. It could have been full shooter, full action, full puzzle, full any of those, half any of those... Because to be honest with you, you can still balance puzzles and shooting, right? Isn't that what God of War really is? Like, there's way more combat, but there's loads of puzzle stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, there's loads of lots of things in that game, but uh, there's loads of games this applies to. Uh, they break up some gameplay with other gameplay and stuff. But people keep saying it's your expectation of it being an action game, which is what bothers you about it being a puzzle game. It's like, no, 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 I'm critical of the puzzles and the amount of them. As for what it was advertised as, I mean, that doesn't actually change how good the game is. That's why I want to keep switching focus back, you know? Yeah. Because we can have bad marketing. That's fair, yeah. but it was a different discussion, sort of. The trailer certainly shows plenty of... Um, shooting. Shooting in it, yeah. Um, The game has, like, no music. Look, I get, wow, cool puzzles. Awesome, I can finally progress. Oh boy, wouldn't have guessed another puzzle. And then I see another puzzle behind that puzzle. They're not hard to solve. Shit is just repetitive. The game is pretty bad right now. All it has going for it is the art style, but I guess I'm missing something. Oh, that's right. Where's the fun at? Isn't this a game? No. Angry. Uh-oh. Someone says, and dude, do I hate this era of gaming. I think it's better to just watch a let's play of the game and enjoy the same stuff you're enjoying from this. I get off work to play this game, but I lost my patience with full puzzles and turned it off. This they're actually saying this is better to consume as a let's play. Oh my That's not um so my feelings on let's plays are complicated. Let's call them let's call them nuanced. That's a safe word to use. Yeah. If you watch if like the let's play we've got on the the watch together, right? This um, Shirako guy playing play, through yeah. it. Yeah, the long play, two and a half hours, no commentary. This is sort of the ideal way to consume the game. Question I don't mark. think that um, maybe. I mean, I mean, I, I waver on that a little bit. There is an element of you could get some legitimate value from being in control of a character exploring this world, but oh. Um, yeah, when I'll, uh, may, I, I suppose it it almost applies to Scorn, uh, but if it's a super narrative heavy game and you watch a long play and get everything about the story and the characters without buying it, it does start to make me go, hmm, should that be allowed? Gameplay yeah, no, is yeah. transformative. I'm pretty strong in that camp. I think it would be hard to dissuade me from well, that Well, to position. be honest with you, Rags, I think if I were to take his video, download it, and then re-upload it with my commentary that I have transformed it more than he did, and I've taken it from him. Uh, probably. There, there's a, Yeah, if the if the commentary was, yeah, if, if if it was substantial commentary, I think a case could certainly be made. Because uh, yeah. this isn't a game that that really owes a lot to personalizing the i mean yeah our experiences were mildly different but not in i would say a meaningful way it's fun to talk about the differences but they were very small uh, like oh you cheese this enemy and i ran away from him you know that's yeah, yeah. so this is one of the really downvoted ones i remember it was at the top at one point but now it's all the way to the bottom says, that's not the point, though. The point people are making is that the puzzles are not good, and neither is the level design. Portal is an incredibly popular puzzle game. It's not that people are too stupid to play Scorn, it's that they can see through its bullshit game design. From what I've seen so far, the game is less about using your head to solve puzzles and more about brute-forcing puzzles to work by trial and error. That shit sucks. I wanted this game to be good more than anyone. I'm a massive Geiger and... Uh, Giger and... B B B 
Baksinski. I think that's the other artist that got the bigger influence on this fan. And generally do enjoy puzzle games. This game is a bad puzzle game, and that's what people have a problem with. I wouldn't call it a bad puzzle game. I would call it... If it, you know if you it, it depends on how you read that. If you had a four-hour puzzle game and there was one good puzzle in it, is bad puzzle game the correct term for what's happening there? Um, probably, because this game, I'd say it has two decent puzzles and one good one. They, have, and, they, oh, they represent a very it. small um, amount of the time, though, right? And then Yes, it's a consider, very, very small amount of the time. If the yeah. dev said to you, um, you completed 50 puzzles in total in the game, would you not then be like, oh, well, your puzzles are shit? Yes, uh, there is an element of, is a puzzle so simplistic and easy that it's only a puzzle in technicality, and I won't be yeah, you're like, like yeah, not, it's totally a puzzle. You're not considering a lot of what people are probably calling bad puzzles as puzzles, because you consider them just opening doors and stuff. But I think that's what a lot of well, people there was, think of puzzles. When you're opening up the, um, oh, it's the section this guy's in here, Shirako. Um, he's in the segment with the big guy that you have to, the, the big... Uh, the big man and the the big dude in the big room. Yeah. And you have to lift up the three screens, so to speak, and then rotate it while moving the peg. That is a very, I, like, I liked it, but it's a very simplistic puzzle. It's very easy to do. Yeah. Um, it's neat to get it. You know, it's a nice little thing. And if the game was full of those, I would be much kinder to this game. But, um... Get one. Yeah, Calling that a puzzle is technically true, but it's like, uh... No, yeah, I agree with you. So, that's yeah. the thing. I would be comfortable... I'm fine with calling it a bad puzzle game or a game with very limited, thin puzzles that are far between, whichever gives the idea off, but it's bad marks either way. Yeah, it doesn't do either, either often enough or well enough when it comes to puzzle or shooter. So, you got another post here that says... I can see how people whining about the puzzles being too difficult and complex. Um, I still think that the marketing was incredibly misleading, especially the Xbox Store. Trigger warning, words, lots of words. So they start with, cohesive, lived-in world. As uh, Metal mentioned earlier. Scorn yeah. takes place in an open-ended world with different interconnected regions. Each region is a maze-like structure with various rooms and paths to discover. All the storytelling happens in-game, with no cutscenes to distract you from the grisly reality of the living, breathing world you're in. But keep your eyes open. The game won't show you any sympathy if you miss something important to your uneasy travels. So this is just market speak. This is someone who's shilling. That's yeah, bullshit, it yeah. Sounds like, oh, yeah, this, this is horseshit. It's not at all how, how I would describe it. And saying all the storytelling happens in game, it's like, I guess you can say that even when there's no storytelling. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. all in game. <laughs> also, there are cutscenes. Um... Next thing they've got is full body awareness. Players will experience better immersion being aware of the character's body and movement. Interaction with the world is realistic. Objects are picked up with your hands instead of just floating in midair. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. Machines and instruments are operated by grabbing the controls, etc. Holy sh... Next, oh, inventory great. and ammo management. Your loadout is defined and limited. This plays a big role in keeping the player in an even greater state of awareness throughout the whole game. Players will have to think about when to fight and when to take cover and how their actions affect the world around them. Different play styles will uh, be needed to advance. Different play styles will be needed to Which advance. Which is funny, because Fuck all off. three of us had a different approach. And they all work. Yeah. Because none of them are particularly interesting. Like, I was just like, I'll just kill everything gradually, right? It's like, I'll just avoid everything. It mostly works. And I think, Mel, you you opted for something in between. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I ran away. Sometimes I shot them all. Um, Nowhere in any of all that mumbo-jumbo is puzzle game, or even the word puzzle mentioned. The only hints to it being a puzzle game are the words maze and awareness. And the awareness is very loosely tied to puzzle. Not to mention it has a whole dedicated section to weapons and loadouts. How can someone not think this is a survival horror like Alien Isolation? But it's again about marketing, I suppose. So if it, so if it has them, it is that thing. Yeah, I, I, I just don't know. I just don't know about that. Another comment? I mean, puzzle isn't really the correct word. The first puzzle is literally the sliding tile puzzle, which is the lowest form of gaming life. It's the prebiotic ooze of puzzle games. Then the following puzzles... <laughs> okay, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the following puzzles are better described as walking around until you find the object to interact with. That's the next lowest form of puzzle. 
Then you've got a lock. That's worse than the sliding tile puzzle. Because yeah, the second one isn't even a puzzle. That's just an just amoeba press the puzzle, find... apparently, yeah. Uh, then you've got the lock-picking minigame, which can only barely be described as puzzle. It's really more of a wait until the thing can be interacted with again. The issue isn't that it's uh, it's a puzzle game. It's that the puzzles are not very much puzzles. Uh, obviously, the atmosphere is excellent, but the marketing that implied it was a puzzle game is a real problem. It's a walking sim that requires you to occasionally find an object with uh, to interact with. A very interesting walk, but implying yeah. it was a puzzle game is misleading. It's a fairly well done walking sim. A good puzzle requires you to think through, make initiative, uh, intuitive connections, or piece things together. They must produce an aha moment. Born does not have those moments. I'll say there's one or two of those. When you, uh, uh, you know, like when sort of, but they're they're all isolated to the puzzles themselves. Yeah, they're all, like, they're only going to yeah. be in the puzzles. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You're not really figuring anything so out. Important. You're walking around until you naturally stumble upon the order objects need to be interacted with. It's ridiculously generous to call these puzzles. Um, I think he's being too harsh. I think some of them are legitimately puzzles. I think I agree with the spirit of it. It's just, between. yeah, he's a bit harsh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I find the wrinkle your brain a little bit rather pretentious. Sure, to your larger point, there's no problem with it being a puzzle game, but other people aren't doing something wrong by having a hard time with certain puzzles. Everybody approaches logical deduction differently. Guys, it's okay to have different takes on the game, but can we stop insulting each other? So, yeah, the subreddit's had trouble because <laughs> this, uh... Oh, Soma's gotten mentioned. What's this? Obtuse trial and error puzzles with frequent non sequiturs are not good game design. I wish it was more like Soma. Soma would not have wasted my time playing a claw game with a red herring in the middle just for multiple minutes to do the same action the game telegraphs that I need to do. That sequence is also just so bizarre. Like, why would this machinery ever be designed like this and require this sort of interaction? It just got me frustrated and made me stop believing in the world due to how gamey and out of touch uh, with the tone everything was. Yeah, I can certainly uh, feel I that one. I agree one. with that, yeah. I can feel that one. I mean, that probably sums it up. Uh, people are very yeah, so. angry at this game. Um, people are also very it's happy a lot of with it. And because of that, it's like fostering the other side to become more invested in pushing uh, their side. And something I saw that kind of annoyed me is um, the developer for... Uh, he works for... Oh, so funny enough, this guy has made, uh, he was behind Gloomwood, which is a game I'm actually interested in checking out. I've, I've got it, I need mm. to play it. He put out a tweet saying, Scorn's release is a great cautionary tale that if you are making a puzzle game, make damn sure people know it's a puzzle game because they will not appreciate being surprised by that, lol. Um, if, uh, that wasn't it my problem. on the difficulty of the puzzles. Um, if, they're, if, if you are playing a game and you have pretty simple puzzles that you go through, I think a lot of gamers will appreciate that breaking up the gameplay. But if you buy a game that you think is an action adventure game or a first person shooter and all of a sudden you stumble into Riven, you are absolutely going to have people who are going to be rightfully upset at you. Um, and yeah, someone's already shared like this is uh, this is just a cut from some of the several trailers and it's just a series of like action. Mm -hmm. and it's yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the first trailer on the Steam, yeah, has plenty of action in it. A lot of shooting in yeah. And yeah, and someone's showing I that mean, they bought the deluxe melee edition. Kills. Someone bought the deluxe edition at sixty-five dollars. Like it's Ooh, damn. Oh boy, you could have got God of War. <laughs> Sound soundtrack and art book, I think. That's it. Yeah. Uh, wow. So. Oh, is it real or digital? Oh, I imagine it's digital. Yeah. Oh fuck off. So the. You know, yeah, the, I I saw that tweet and I was just like, well, for me, it was much more about how I uh, I didn't care if, how much focus is going to be on shooting all puzzles. I just wanted them to be good, whatever they chose. Exactly. I'm with me. Um, and uh, I think he eventually said, like, uh, for those who think that um, the game is shit because of how much focus there is on puzzles in this this horror. You know, action -y game. Maybe they should replay Silent Hill, which I thought was interesting. He said that the implication, of course, being that um, Silent Hill is much more puzzle focused than you realize, and you should hate it as much as you hate this game if you're going to go that far. What do you have no, to say I... about that, Metal? Uh, I thought the puzzles were great in Silent Hill for the most part. Uh, there's some really cool puzzles. If you ask me about the uh, about the fighting gameplay, though, that shit was clunk as fuck and didn't really get that much better even up until Silent Hill Three. That might be a really spicy thing to say, but the melee combat and specifically in Silent Hill is oh can be infuriating for sure. 
Uh, but no, puzzles puzzles are awesome. Good, it's good stuff. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he's and they're going, actually puzzles. He seems to be going <laughs> quite hard in defense of the game, and uh, it's it it's gotten to the point where it's just like, yeah, you just you didn't know you wanted to have an action game where you kill things that are flashy and stuff, and you didn't get what you wanted. And I, again, I'm just sitting here like, <laughs> I just want least favorite part of the game. I just wanted a video game. Um, but yeah, that about sums it up. Um, I doubt me, Metal, or Rags will ever talk about Scorn in detail again, other than quick no, references. Not likely. Passing reference, yeah. Uh, incredibly disappointing. I was kind of looking forward to it. I thought it would be neat. But here we are. This is what we got. And Yeah. Yeah. I, not a fan. This, wouldn't recommend. This game was supposed to be the sludge ender and not a pile, a little cherry on top of the sludge pile. <laughs> That's what it ended up being. <laughs> Um, yeah, anything else you guys want to say about it? Honestly, no. Um, no. There was a lot of mileage that we got out of the Rebirth discussion because there were a, there was a lot more to that game. That game yeah. was trying to do a lot more. There was story and characters, and they tried to tell a, you know, like a narrative. Um, and also it was linked to other games we played. But this game yeah. seems like an isolated little disappointment. Yeah, I think the, uh, the more interesting part... To, not, it's not talking about the game, but probably more about the whole marketing thing and how long it took to be made and what has been promised maybe in the beginning, which I'm not familiar with, but that might be more interesting to look into than into the actual game because I think we pretty much covered everything that it has to offer. I would go as far as saying uh, the developers are lucky that enough people are going to defend this that it can escape being said to be... Um... I don't want to go as far as saying a scam, but absolutely not worth the time and investment and absolute price mm. during what you get. Feels like the, yeah. the the Geiger fan base is so desperate for content for for this kind of thing, especially gaming content that they're like, I don't know, grasping for everything they get, and then it's just like, no, this is great. It's like, look how cool this looks, and they're just and for the looks, maybe I don't know, just speculating. I have no clue, but. That's what it feels like. So, that's that. Thank you for listening. That that's is a, that. We had a bonus EFAP episode, as you can see. Uh, no Fringy, because obviously he hadn't played the game. This will go want out to. Uh, as soon as possible, and it'll put us ahead of the numbers again to the point where we'll have to source of it out on that. But <laughs> um, we'll, uh, we'll still see you guys on Saturday for talking about She-Hulk. That is the plan. Ooh, oh, boy. Have fun with that. Yeah. Thank you all for listening, folks. And uh, yeah. have a spooky, spooky, fun Halloween, I guess. Yeah, have a spooky, spooky, weenie time. Spookenheimers. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Boo.